Matthew 12. At that time Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were hungered, and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. But he said unto them, Have ye not read what David did when he was in hunger, and they that were with him? How he entered into the house of God, and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests? Or have ye not read in the law, how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath, and are blameless? But I say unto you, that in this place is one greater than the temple. If ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy, and not sacrifice. Ye would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue, and behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days, that they might accuse him? And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it, and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then saith he to the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored, whole, like as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held a counsel against him, how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all, and charged them that they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Esaias the prophet, saying, Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb. And he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts, and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Either make the tree good, and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt, and his fruit corrupt. But the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words 
thou shalt be condemned. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. The Queen of the South shall rise up in the judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister. I mean to that. I mean to that, and I believe in every word we heard. And the Lord of the the word of the Lord is the best ever to hear. Peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, some of you are complaining about when I play sound uh, from my computer, you receive it from one speaker. I mean, what a big deal. Instead of focusing at this wisdom, we are focusing of how many speakers are working. Aren't you? As long as you hear it and it's fine, it's working. So please let us, you know, f focus on something serious. You know, you guys, you remind me sometimes, some of you, uh, when, uh, when the Messiah, he entered the house, of Martha and she was so excited and then you know he said to her like uh, you focus on many things but the important is one so please you know I heard this many times one speaker is working only when you play the audio oh so what what a speaker is not good for you now man I remember the first time I have a cell phone. It was the most funny phone ever. Today we are complaining about things which is not really important. Anyway, uh, who is the family in Christianity? Is the family really is someone she is your wife and your children's? For sure, yes. But Christ, he made it clear that my family, my brothers, my sisters, my mothers are those who do the will of my Father. Which means Christ, he made us all belong to a big family, huge family, billions of people. Those who believe in him as his disciples and those who follow him and those who obey the Father. So it is not really just, you know, your bloodline of a family uh, of people you know. Because actually most of those, not only most, I mean all of them, you did not even choose them. You did not choose your father, you did not choose your mother, you did not choose who was your sister, you chose none. Neither they choose you. You are just born there. But Christ's family is a chosen family. My brothers and my sisters, my mothers, 
those who do the will of my Father, those who believe in me, those who follow me, those who obey. And actually, every day I witness that me, myself, I have a big family, huge family, family I never even met. Isn't it beautiful that you have people who care for you, but yet you never met them? They don't even know how you look like. Isn't it beautiful that you enjoy a family who even support you in every mean, yet you never met them? Christ, he changed our life and he made us all one family. In chapter, in Matthew chapter 12, you know, we hear how the Pharisees and the Jews used to try to question Jesus and they do somehow seem as Muslims today. Like, is it forbidden to do work in Saturday? Is it okay to heal in Saturday? This is what you hear from Muslims today. You know, Muslims today, they focus in silly stuff like, you know, you cannot ask a question about their God, but you can ask a question about shaving under arm. They spend the day speaking foolishness, but they don't never answer something serious or focus on something serious. And the Messiah, he always, I will use a Christian prince language, got them busted. Sabbath was made for the man, not the man was made for the Sabbath. Those Jews in the time of the Jesus, they are the same as the Mohammedan today. The book was made for the man, not the man was made for the book. The law was made for the man, not the man was made for the law. They practice it in the opposite direction. And guess what law they are following? A law of the devil. A law teaching you, you beat your wife. It's okay to cheat on your wife. It's okay to lie to her. Because lying to your wife is cheating. It's just a form of cheating. You know, cheating is many ways. Cheating have many faces. And many of those faces that we try to give them legitimate names, like a white lie. There's nothing that's called white lie and black lie, good lie and bad lie. Why we color the lies? Lie is a lie. While Christ, he established the foundation of family. Islam destroyed it. He made a man like a rooster who jumped between chickens. There's no more love. There's no more relation. There's only contract of sexual activities. We legalize multi-partners in the bedroom. That's what Islam is about. While Jesus forbid us from abusing the gift of God, that he created us male and female. While the Jews, they were abusing women, divorcing them when they get older, the Messiah, he showed them that this is absolutely evil. You marry and you love the one you are married to. Many things we see around us proving to us that there is no better than Christ to listen to, to obey, and there is no more evil than Muhammad to listen to and to obey. Someone asking what Sabbath means. Sabbath is not mean, Sabbath is any day you designate to God. It doesn't mean Saturday necessarily. But it means Saturday in the same time. So if you designate a, a day, let us say tomorrow is Wednesday, and you say this day for God, that is Sabbath. So Sabbath, Sabbath is a day where a day of God. You have a Skype or no? Sure, I have a Skype. Are you Muslim, Mr. Mohsin? Are you a Muslim? My Skype is not open yet. 
If you want to call me, just you know, let me finish what I'm saying and I will be happy to receive you. <clears throat> All right. So it's very important for us not to be silly like those Pharisees or those who follow Muhammad, who focus in rituals and empty stuff. You know, like there is some religions, if we can call them religion, they focus in the sound of the drum. And the drum make too much noise, but the drum is empty. So they make too much noise. This is why the Messiah, he exposed their hypocrisies. He said, don't pray like those who pray in the corners. As if he's talking about Muhammad and his religion. But in fact, at that time, he was speaking about the Jews because they used to do the same as the Muhammadan do today. They go to the corner of the street and he stopped praying. So everybody from both sides, from both corners, will see him praying. We always have to be vigilant and not to be fooled by somebody speaking about God because many they will come to you in the clothes of a sheep, but they are wolves. You know, if you open the yellow pages of Muhammad, you'll find how much how much time he spent to say, worship God, worship God, worship God. What, what kind of God we are talking about? Anyone can bring a God as he wish. Right? What God we are talking about? And how we define God? Who is God? Who is qualified to be God? You see, even the Muslims did not even know even who is their God. They have no idea who is their God. All what they know, there is a somebody, his name is Allah. He is living up in the sky. He is in the top of a big chair, very huge chair, and he is carried by eight angels. He have a leg, he have two hands in the right side, he have a face, he have five fingers. That's all what they knew. Additional to that, if we study this God, we will find that he is the most full, officially ignorant God. Who think that the baby and the sperm is coming from the backbone of the, the man and the ribs of the women. Who have no ethic to the point he promised us women with big breasts in heaven. I mean, aren't you ashamed even to say to a crowd, I'm going to give you women with big boobs? What kind of God this God is? How God can be God if he is not holy? How God can be God if he is filthy? How God can be God but yet he is a fool? So today, it is Saturday night for me, it is Sunday for many who live in the East already, but it doesn't matter really which day we are, all days belong to the Lord when we are speaking about Him. The Messiah, He said, every two of you mention my name, I will be between them, which means I will be the third. It doesn't matter when you speak. Please be respectful. This is my first time in your podcast. Mr. Mohsen, you are welcome to stay. You are welcome to leave. Nobody is forcing you. I have no respect to the God of Islam. You like it. You can stay. You don't like it. This is up to you. I'm not insulting you. I do not know you. Your God, he called me monkey, pig, kafir, najis, filthy. I mean, all kinds of names. And then you are asking me to be respectful. Who to what? To a person he said to your father to beat your mother? Do you respect such a person? His name is Allah. He said you can that your father he can beat your mother. Are you proud about a God he teach your dad to, in order to make your mother obey him to beat her? I mean, what kind of a son you are if you are proud about it? Right, my friend? 
So if you are asking me to respect you, no problem. I will respect you. I do not know you. Maybe you are better than me. But who is talking about you and me now? We are talking about God. So if you are very much sensitive, you cannot handle the truth that Santa Claus is real and Allah is not, then you better leave. You know, people, they speak against Santa Claus. I don't know why Santa Claus was a good man. Very good man. Very humble. Very giving. He spent his life giving. He gave his life to people. He spent his life making people happy. But Allah is not. Allah, he spent his time, Aka Muhammad, killing, destroying families, nations. So, when we speak the truth, the truth hurt. And I understand Mr. Muhsan is upset. His first time here. Well, my friend, I have to share the truth with you. Otherwise, I have to be hypocrite. How I can be truthful with you? You see, in the Middle East, we say my friend is the one who make me cry, not the one who make me laugh. Which means he, the one who tell me the truth. Right? It's not beating hard. It's like a small, small finger. <laughs> Guys, uh, Mr. Muhsan, he said that the Quran teach him to, te to beat his wife like a small finger. I mean, Muhsan, who is here? The, who, who is here the fool? The Quran says, beat them until they obey you. Okay, so now you beat the women with your finger. I mean, what can, is that a tickling? Are you tickling her? Like, <laughs> she will tell. I mean, come on, don't fool yourself. Don't be stupid. What not like beating? Not like beating? It says, beat them until they obey you. Use your brain, my friend. It's not like beating, guys. It's like, you know, using your finger doesn't cause pain. So, okay, now I want to go with you. So your wife, she is not obeying you. And Allah, he said to you, beat her by your finger. Okay, now she will not obey you more because she like it. It's tickling. So what you will do next? Do you think really anyone here in the world will believe in what you say? I can show you your prophet. He take the side of a man who did beat his wife until her skin became a greener than her clothes. Greener than her clothes. He took the side of the man who want to rape the women. Yes, she is his wife, but it is a rape. He want to force her into bed. This is how the Muslims, by the way, I mean, I don't know this gentleman. Maybe he's a nice guy. Maybe he do not know. Maybe he's just copy-paste what, what they told him. But my friend, this is not true. And you know what? Let us make it a light beating. I mean, how lighter can be more than a spit? Do you accept somebody to spit on you? Can it be lighter more than this? It's insulting. It's a disrespect. It's dishonoring your mother. How you accept that? And you know, what kind of God he teach that we can beat our wives so they will disobey us? Right? So today, you know, we as a Christian family and who, whoever here not a Christian is welcome. Uh, we celebrate the wisdom of Christ. And I wish you are all of you around me here so we can hold hands together and we pray. We pray to the Lord so he will open the eyes and the heart of those people who they are blind. You know, there is many people, they see the sun like us every day, but they don't see it. Right? Uh, look what Muhsan he said, guys. I want to show you an example of Islamic teaching. Excuse me, Mr. Muhsan, I'm going to quote your uh, answer and I will put it in the screen so people will see why I disrespect Islam. Why I disrespect Islam. Selfie time. 
not only I disrespect Islam, Islam is very evil. Look what Islam made out of you, my friend. And don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to make fun of you. I'm here to teach, not to make fun of you. Mr. Muhsan, he said, Arabian prophet, it's like how the father punish his child if he disobey. Okay, so your mom is a child and you can spank her over her diaper. I mean, aren't you ashamed of saying that? This is a woman. This is a woman. It's a human being. She is not a child who need your spanking. Shame on you. You just admitted that we beat and we treat our women as if they are kids. Oh yeah, I forgot you must marry kids. You have no family. You know, a family is a mother, a father, or a husband and a wife. And those husband and wife, they are sitting in one chair. In Islam, no. The man sitting in the chair and the woman she bent over to spank her to make her obey me. You know, in USA, if you beat a dog, you go to jail, my friend. I'm serious. You go literally to jail. In your religion, your mother, she will be spanked as if she is a little child. And that is a teaching of God. You must be very proud. I mean, I'm sure many women now they will marry you because you are following Muhammad. Hmm? I mean, how in the world any woman she will accept to marry a Muslim man who believe in such a garbage? First of all, a man who beat his wife is a coward and he have no dignity. Coward, you know. If you want to practice that you have missiles, go and fight men like you in your size. But beating the women, there is no honor in that. So it's a sign of a cowardness. It's a sign of a lack of intellect and intelligence. It's a sign of being ignorant and uneducated. It's a sign of being a fool and dummy and a garbage and low class. No real man will beat a woman. You know, uh, if a woman, she is going to beat you, you want to defend yourself, I might understand, okay, she is being stupid violence and she want to beat you, then you defend yourself. But this is the same for her. She has the right to defend herself too, if you are being the fool. But here we see one-sided religion, that the man, he can beat his wife. Why? Because this religion teach them that women are stupid and they have a brain of a child, so we need to spank them. In fact, what I see, that Muhammad, he have a brain of a turtle. You know what? A turtle will not come with such a rule. Even the turtle is so slow, but she is wise. Because if I beat my wife to obey me, I mean, what kind of a wife I will have now in my house? A woman, she hate me to death. She might be poison for me. A woman, she is going to cook for me, sleep next to me, but she hate me to death. She can kill me. That is a very foolish behavior. You know, behavior. Sometimes women became, my friend, all of those are excuses. Okay, I will go with you. Guys, look what Mr. Mohsen, he said. Let us take what Mr. Mohsen, he said. Another selfie. Let us put Mr. Mohsen in the screen again. Look what he said. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it better. That some women, they became sometimes like bad, aggressive. And a gentle nudge is the right direction. 
<laughs> okay. What if a man, he became bad? Can the women give him a simple nudge? So in your religion, only the women can go bad. In your religion, only women are like the, the, if the, 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 the defect. Yes, it is the truth. In your religion, only women are bad. How many women, they are super intelligent and they marry a, you know, a fool. So now you are giving authority to a fool to be a woman. She is a wonderful woman. Shame on you, Mohsen. Shame on you. In the year 2020, you believe that the women who are you, as you describe her, you know, I mean, okay, why, what, what, what she is doing? Can you tell me what she is doing? What she, why she deserve beating? I want to hear from you. Do you like to call me Mohsen? Do you like to call me my friend live on air? Give me an example why you want to beat her. Uh, hold on. In the Bible, the man is the head of the house, but he is not the head of beating. <laughs> There's a huge difference. The head of the house is the same as the Christ. Said he, Christ, he said clearly that the same as the Christ, he gave himself to the church, the man he gave himself to his wife. So he is the head of the house to sacrifice himself, not to torture his house. You see, Christ, he is our, the head of the church. He sacrificed himself to the church. He did not torture and beat his followers. It's a very clear sign that Muhammad is mentally ill man and he is giving control to men because he is a lousy person. He just care for warriors who want to go kill and suck blood and rape women. So why he want to give women rights? Who care about women? They are not going to go fight for him. Right? I advise you, my friend Mohsen, to leave Islam immediately. Islam is bad for health, bad for family, bad for your children. Imagine your son, he see you beating your mother. I mean, this is disgusting. He will never forget that. And he will never forgive you. And you are a coward. And not only Islam, he allowed a man to beat his wife, Islam allowed a man to abuse his wife in many ways. As an example, if the woman, she refused to share the bed, her husband can beat her. But if the man, he don't want to sleep, it's okay. You know, look at this religion. The Muslim man, he can have four wives. But the women cannot have four husbands. The man he can punish the wife, as a chapter three verse, chapter four verse thirty-four saying, and jail her in her room, and he will not sleep with her. But the woman she cannot do the same. It doesn't matter how bad you are. Allah, angels, everybody is against women. Actually, I will show, I will show you. Even our topic today is not about this. But I will show you an example, Mr. Mohsen, and I want you to focus with me. And I pray that you, before you leave today, you will accept Christianity, you accept Christ as your Savior. I want to go into the Quran, my friend, and I want you to read this with me. And try not to laugh. Try not to laugh. Muhammad was a very bad man with his wives, and he used to cheat and sleep with the maids in his bed, in their bed. The women, they have two parties. Two parties, like Democrat and Republic in USA. And they made a strike about the, against the filthy Muhammad. Look what Muhammad he do always. He used God as a way to control. 
He could not beat them because one of them, she is the daughter of Abu Bakr and Abu Bakr will beat the hell of him, you know. And, you know, they are daughters of his companions. He need them. He don't, he cannot, he don't dare to beat them. Actually, once he did beat Aisha, as the Hadith said. But obviously, Muhammad is in disability. Look at the coward. Muhammad, he said to his wives, if you two, hmm, Aisha and Hafsa, turn into repentance to Allah, huh? which is between two brackets, it's better for you. This is a translation. For your heart indeed is so inclined to oppose what? Between two brackets. I mean this translation. They are adding words not there. Let me take it off. I will put different translation. I hate it when they put words between two. Uh, I mean either translate it as it is or don't translate. If you two turn repentance to him, to, which means to Allah, your heart are indeed so inclined. He accused him to be kuffar. But if you back each other against him, him who? Muhammad. Listen to carefully what Muhammad he want, he is going to say. Listen carefully at the, as this disaster. Truly, truly Allah and his, is his protector. Okay. I mean, the guy <laughs> having fight with his wives. What Allah is his protectors? I mean, have you ever heard of a stupidity like this? Allah is his hold on this is need some uh, uh, some extra uh, care we cannot just go over it like this this is needs a special effect oh, sorry the sound was very loud if you do Turn into repentance to him, him, him. Your heart are indeed so inclined. But if you, you, you back up each other against him, truly, truly Allah is his protector <laughs> and Jibreel <laughs> and every righteous among the believers <laughs> and furthermore the angels will back him up Like, what the heck? The guy, he have a fight with two wives. He need all this army. Allah is not enough. No. And Jibreel, not enough. Every righteous believer, 1.4 billion, is not enough. And furthermore, all the angels. I mean, who's left? Is that the third world war? You are fighting two women. They are five foot tall. Why you need all this line of uh, Allah and Jibreel? I mean, and the firefighters and the police and the Sharia Allah and Susu and Mimi and Fufu and Didi and Dudu. Is that telling you something? What this is telling me that Muhammad is suffering from being coward. Those are daughters of companions. He don't dare to do things to them. He give up. He said to himself, okay, let me use my trick. Allah, he said to me, Allah, he made a verse about you. This is why Aisha, she said to Muhammad, Inni ara rabbuka yusari'u ila hawaka ya Muhammad. I see that your Lord, your God, Allah, he ran to satisfy your sexual need. She did not mention the sexual needs or let us say entertainment, but it is about sexual because about women who offer himself. Let us see. Look what Aisha she said to Muhammad. Aisha said, It seemed to me that your Lord has tend to satisfy your desire. 
Isn't it obvious that he is a fraud? What is the interest of God to make verses saying any woman she want to give herself to the prophet? The guy already have 13 wives. Hmm? Innocent question. Why do you think Muhammad had many followers considering all the things exposed about him? Were the people so impressed in the Quran or what? I'm not sure what do you mean, my friend. Were the people so impressed by the Quran? No, the Quran itself says the opposite. The Quran says that the Arab they make fun of the Quran. And they say to Muhammad, if you wish, we can make better. Right? Sing the, sing the Quran. <laughs> so, I don't know. It looks like Mahsan is, uh, is so quiet now. I think he is thinking, I hope he will leave the cult of Islam and he will understand very well that Muhammad is nothing but a fraud. A family cannot be built by a man like Muhammad. A family can be built by a person who is holy, like our God, the Lord, the Messiah, who made marriage a unity, not sharing bed, who made marriage about love, not about sex, where he taught the Jews and us, that the man, he will leave his parents, same as the women, and they will become a chad, they will become one. In Islam, you don't become one with your wife. She is just an employee. You can fire her out anytime you wish. She is made just to serve you, to cook for you, to take off her panty, give you babies. That is her duty. That cannot be from God. That's against God. Even, even in the stories of the Muhammadan who they stole it from the Bible about Jesus, about God, about Adam, about Eve. How many Eve God he created to Adam? Why, why you Muslim believe in the story of Adam and Eve? Why Allah did not create four Eve to Adam? Hmm? What do you think, guys? Why Allah, the Muslim, they believe in the story of Adam or Eve. That's the first man, his name is Adam. And there's a woman, her name is Eve. Even though some Muslim believe that there is, uh, before Adam, there was uh, uh, people who occupied the earth and Allah, he destroyed them. Uh, but they believe in this story. Okay, why Allah did not create Adam and four Eve? Or 72 Eves? He was in heaven. This is heaven. You Muslim now you are working to go to heaven. Okay, why the, the heaven you will go back to? You will get a lot of women, but the poor Adam in the heaven he got only one woman. What's wrong at that time? Allah he was out of women. This is the only woman in the warehouse. Hmm? And you know one of the funny things about the God of Islam that all the women he will create for the Muhammadan they look the same. They have the same name, they have the same voice, they have the same height, they have the same face. The prophet PPUH prophesied that Islam will come into every house and it's happening right now. My friend, it's the opposite. It's the opposite. Islam will come to every house. People are laughing. And you know what? If Islam will come to every house, so why your prophet, he said, Islam will leave every house. I mean, how stupid he is. One, one statement, he says Islam will come to every house. And the other statement, he says, okay, is it true that your prophet, he said, that time will come and people will leave Islam and even dogs will piss in all of the, over the city of Medina, which means he's a grave too? Is that true? Or I'm making things up? Let us see some reference.
just to show you that your prophet is mentally ill. I mean, if what you said is true, Muhammad, he have many hadiths saying that time will come and nobody will believe in Islam. And by the way, my friend, Islam is dying and shrinking. Don't you notice? You fool yourself by people who have no right to change their religion. Give them freedom and you will see how many Muslims will stay as Muslims. Yahya related to me from Malik, from Ibn Hima, whatever, blah, 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 blah. From Abu Huraira, the messenger of Allah said, grant him peace, he said, Medina will lift in the beast, in the best way, sorry, until a dog or a wolf enter it and urinate on one of the pillars of the mosque. <laughs> I mean, look at this prophecy. Even in his, even his prophecy is full of urine. I mean, this is a urine prophet. Until a dog or a wolf will enter it and urinate on one of the pillars of the mosque, which mosque where, where, where the grave of Muhammad is exist, or even the member, the member, this is where the, the Imam he stand, this is where Muhammad used to make his prayer. They ask Messenger of Allah, who will leave, who will have the fruit at that time in this city? He said, animals seeking food, birds, wild beasts, the city will be dead. Nobody will live there. Hmm? Your Prophet, he have tons of hadith speaking about Islam dying. So which one of them? And not only that, I can show you from the Quran saying that the one who will be victorious is the one who follow Christ. Let us go to the Quran. Uh, let us see here. <laughs> oh boy. This is your Quran, my friend. Chapter 3, verse number 55. It says, Behold, Allah said to Jesus, which is not exist in the Quran, really. It says, Isa, there's no Jesus in the Quran. I will take thee and raise thee into myself. By the way, it doesn't say I will take thee. It says I will cause you to die, Metawafika, and raise you to myself, and I clear thee from the falsehood. Hmm? And those uh, 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 who f who plus me will make those who uh, follow thee superior to those who reject faith to the day of resurrection. Okay, the one who follow who. Follow thee. Who is thee? Guys, this verse here is speaking. Who is thee when I say thee? Speaking about Jesus, right? Okay. So those who follow Jesus will be victorious until the judgment day. That destroy all the cult of Islam. Because the Muslim, they say, there is nobody true Christian anymore. The Bible is corrupt. Christianity, the real Christianity is gone. But here it says that this is those people will be superior to those who reject faith until the day of resurrection. So we are the one will be superior according to the Quran. Because there's no other Christians except us. Right? When you say Islam enter in every house, we die laughing, my friend. After all the money they spend in America, I mean, if you look at the number of those who converted to Islam and those who leave Islam, you will see that you are spending, you, you, made, you made zero. It's like somebody, he spent uh, 20 millions and then he earned 5 millions. No, my friend, you Muslim, you don't follow Jesus. You follow Muhammad. Don't lie to yourself. When Allah, he said that to Jesus, he said to that to Jesus in his time, according to the story. He spoke to Isa in his time, not later. And just to show you 
why I believe that the one who wrote the Quran is an idiot. I don't want to use the word idiot too much. I'm exaggerating. He's stupid. He's not an idiot. Idiot is a smart person, but Allah is literally stupid. Look at this verse here. It says, "In the Isa in the law, كمثل آدم خلقه من تراب ثم قال له كن فيكون." Look how stupid this dummy God. He said that the similarity of Jesus is before Allah is the same as Adam. He created him from dust, and then he said to him, "Be," and he was. But Jesus was not created from dust. And he did not say to Adam, be, and he was. Mohsen, I'm going to shave my 20, 21 foot beard. If you can show me where in the Quran Allah he said to Adam, be, and he was. Guys, is that fair? Is that fair? Either the one who wrote the Quran is a stupid idiot to do not know how Allah created Adam. Or he is, a, you know, he is a smart. Okay, the verse in the front of you is so clear that the similarity of Jesus is the same as Adam. He created him from dust, and then he said to him, "Be," and he was. Where, where it says that? Where, where in the Quran, Allah he said to Adam, "Be," and he was. Where? I'm putting it in the screen. <laughs> Guys, look at this. You are putting it in the screen. Mahsan, are you okay? My friend, Allah, he said in different verse how he created Adam. Let me show you how we can prove easy that Muhammad is a fool. Literally a fool. Here we go. This is the Quran. Hmm. Read and laugh. Chapter 15, 29, chapter 38, verse number 72, saying the same garbage. How Allah, he created Adam. First, he made the mud. How do you make a mud? You bring water and dust. Then you make them, you mix them. Then, and when I have fashioned him, he did what? He fashioned him. And then he breathed into him. And he became a living creature. Where is B? Where is B? Are you there, Mahsan? Do you see anywhere Allah, he said B and he was? The story in front of you. He made mud. He, he mixed sand with water. He made him as from sounding clay. And he modeled him in a shape. And then I fashioned him. And then I breathed into him. Where is this? In the stages it says he said be. Yes, Allah said be. And the, this process happened. Where, where? Show me. Like, where, okay, so Allah, he said be. Do you see it where it says be? Where, where? He said be. <laughs> I, I, you know, maybe I'm blind. I want you to help me. Where you see how? Hmm? Here we go. The creation is finished. And then the angels, they bow down to Adam. Look at this. Show me the word B. I want to see it, my friend. But no, this is stupid. This is a contradiction. You see, I'm showing you the two so I can show you contradiction. Because either he created him by B, or he created him in his stages, making modeling, and then the breathing, and then there is no B. You see, if Allah, he said here, after he breathed into him, he said B, and he was, then it makes sense. Okay, both of them saying that, but it doesn't say that. Does it have to be all in one place? No, it doesn't have to be in one place, but this is here, how he created Adam. This is how he created Adam. That's it. Secondly, how Jesus is the same as Adam. Was Jesus created from mud? I mean, this is very stupid. You see, the only human being is created from dust is Adam. And Eve is created from Adam and dust. The rest is not. 
We are not. We are just born. And Jesus, he was born. There is no dust involved. Hmm. So it's a very stupid to compare between Jesus and Adam. Because they share nothing. Yeah, it doesn't say that. And look how Muhammad, he told the Muslim to do a debate. Look at this debate. Look how stupid this debate is. If anyone dis dis dispute with you in this matter, which means about Jesus, tell them, tell them, okay, come, 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 silence me. Huh? Let us together, let us gather together, our sons and your sons, our women and your women, ourselves and yourself, and let us earnestly pray to invoke Allah to curse the one who lies. I mean, how stupid this debate is. <clears throat> exactly. And even Allah, when he was creating Adam, Adam, he said to him, finish me, Allah, before the sunset. <laughs> Adam was worried about finishing him late. Adam and Jesus were mentioned 25 times in the Quran. Well, hold on, you know, I don't know, you see, you Muslims are really funny. Guys, Adam and Jesus, they are mentioned 25 times in the Quran. All right. As a search for Adam, it's coming 20 times. Let me open a different website, which is more, uh, have a better search engine, where we can... Uh, I mean, even, even the way they try to prove to you, it's a childless. Let us say for the sake of argument, a Christian prince, he mentioned 25 times, and Muhammad, he mentioned 25 times. That's mean I am the same as Muhammad. That's stupid, my friend. I mean, this is really, really silly. But I will go with you. Hmm. I will open a different Islamic website. And do your silly way of approving yourself the lack of intellect and reasoning my keyboard is stuck is not the you know sometimes like i don't have an arabic keyboard so i have like the keys so you type in English, Arabic, you look for Arabic, okay. Uh, <clears throat> I just went to this website. Hmm? I found 30 time Adam. Chapter two, verse number 31, just to check that this is true. Uh, chapter two, verse number 33. Chapter 2, verse number 34. Chapter 2, verse 35. 237. 333. 359. 527. Uh, here, I don't see Adam, so I'll take this one off. So we will take from the, uh, from the 31. This is 29. I don't see Adam here. Okay. And I don't see Adam here. Just to avoid the mistakes, you know. So we have 28 now. Okay. Uh, so, uh, where we stop, guys? <laughs> I forgot where we stop. What number we were counting? <laughs> anyway, we, you know, we, we have a 28 left. So it, the, the rest we have to have Adam, all of them. Okay, all of them they have Adam. Look. Until now, all have Adam. This is the last page. Okay, Adam, 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 Adam. Oh, there's no, uh, here we, there's Adam. Uh, here there's no Adam. That, that means we have a 27. Uh, 26. Uh, this is Adam. 
and here there's no Adam okay so he said that Adam coming in the Quran 25 I will make it exactly search engine maybe it's true but even that will I will make it exact the verse exactly it's coming as 20 time do you see it exactly Adam 20 time but let us say for the sake of argument is 25 and let us type the word Isa <clears throat> 16 time let us type any word 25 time yeah so let us say that Adam and the Isa uh, and they are coming 25 time uh, uh, equally you know as he said that is a proof that Adam is the same as Isa this is your proof there is nothing actually to share between Adam and Isa Isa according to Islam is born Adam is not born the Messiah never commits sin Adam commits sin the Messiah is right now up in heaven Adam is dead so what what they share together nothing so they cannot you know they you know they could not find something really to be uh, you know and even your God he said the similarity between Isa and Adam that he said to him be so because you are bankrupt you are trying to find a way to make him like Isa if we type the Isa hmm, gone nothing the same as when they speak about the word you know the equal word like for uh, 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 moon how many times the word moon repeated they say to you that the word moon come in the Quran I, I don't know in the article how uh, how many it says but the fact the word Qamar uh, is not the only word is used in the Quran for moon the word Shahar is a word mean moon Shahar Shahar is not a word mean month Today in the language in Arabic, they use it as a word mean month. But Shahar is an Aramaic Hebrew word mean moon. Right? They say to you that the day and the night in Islam, they come equally. They say like the word day and the word night come equally. The word day come in as 98 times. In their article, it says 365 times. Any word, exact phrase, only once. Uh, uh, let us use the word one, yom, just to show you, you know, because yom mean day, nahar mean day. So the word nahar appear. It appeared 211. Any word. 415 the word Nahar again 98 exact phrase once so they make their own calculation to convince you that the Quran have a have something special I find it very stupid How many times the word Allah is repeated and how many times the word Shaitan is repeated? Shaitan. Four times. Shaitan four times. Okay. Let us see. Uh... Yaqub four times. Does that mean Jacob is the same as Shaitan? Do you see it? Jacob, the word Yaqub, appear four times. The word Shaitan appear four times. That means Jacob and Shaitan are the same. 
very stupid, silly logic. Bankruptcy. Totally bankruptcy. Are you there, Mohsen? Do you have anything else to say, my friend? Do you have anything else to say? This is what you have, like uh, Isa is 25 and Adam is 25, that's it. That's what you have? That's the best you can in Muslims you, you bring to us? Allahumma ya muqallib al Mr. Free, he just said to me in Arabic, uh, don't forget a Christian prince to say this a prayer Muhammad he said my friend you remind me of your prophet when he went to his own son wife Hafsa he said exactly the same thing but with, with some change he said Subhana he said praise be to Allah who made my heart flip for you your prophet he was flirting with married women and she is married to his own son am I lying my friend so, my friend, be sure when you visit your son and you see his wife wearing sexy clothes to say to her, Praise be to Allah who made my heart and my private part flip for you. Have you ever heard of a person, the Muslims, they claim he is the best of mankind? He go to visit his own son when the husband is not there and he flirt with the wife. And this is written in their books. And not only that, the wife of the son, she claimed that since Muhammad, he flirted with her, Allah, he forbid her husband from having sex with her. Each time he tried to have sex with her, Allah, he make his private part as well. Do you want me to show you that, Mr. Free? Do you like to call me and you read it? Or you, and you will say to me, it doesn't say that, CP. Do you want to call me? Who wanna call me and tell me it doesn't say that CP? Do we have any Fifi here? Who wanna call me and get me busted that it doesn't say that CP? That Muhammad he flirt with the wife of his son, and Muhammad, after he flirt with the wife of his son, Allah he made a miracle. He made the private part of the husband swell. Hmm? what kind of God is God he made the, the penis of the husband swell why he is the husband if Allah is God he should make Muhammad penis as well because he is wishing to have a wife she is not his <laughs> is, is it true it should be the opposite so Allah he make the penis of the husband swell not the one who is flirting with the wife the stranger? And you can imagine Allah, he have the stick of Hori Potter. The poor husband, he come back home and he want to sleep with his wife. He take off his pant, he go to bed, and then Allah, he hit him with the, with the, with the hammer. <laughs> and the poor guy, his private part is not. Functioning no more. <clears throat> the more he gets close to his wife, his penis is swell. He stay away, his penis go normal. It's a miracle, brother. It's a miracle. The miracle of the penis. While Jesus making the blind see the dead raised from death, the one who cannot walk walk, Allah he was making penises as well. Is that true, Mahsin? Or I'm lying, my friend. <clears throat> who is a Muslim when I call me and say to me you are lying challenge anyone who is a Muslim willing to call me and challenge me to show it in the screen and he will read it
anyone? Any brave Muhammadan is proud? So look what you focus in. You try to convince us that Muhammad is a prophet that, okay, uh, Jesus' name mentioned 25 times, Adam mentioned 25 times, that's it, it's a miracle. This is the proof that Muhammad is a prophet. I will make a book and I will write your name 25 times. Uh, Donald Trump 25 times. Monica Lewinsky and Billy Clinton 25 times. And that will make me God. That's amazing, my friend. I will make a book about cheese. I will say the word cheese 100 times. The word milk 100 times. The word sugar 100 times and the word is stupid 100 times. And that will make me God. This is the logic of the Muhammadan. <clears throat> what about we read the Quran where Allah he says that he created the human being from the backbone of the man. I hope you are securing your backbone, my friend. Your God, Allah, he never heard of testicles. Or the God who speak, he says, that women have a sperm coming from their ribs. It doesn't say that, CP. No, it does say that. Or what about a prophet? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I apologize. I tried to hold it. Hold on. Allah, he loved me now. Have you ever heard of a God? He loved those who sneeze. <laughs> Finally, Allah is satisfied with the Christian prince. Look at this wisdom. Mr. 25. Allah, he loved those who sneeze and he hate those who do yawning. Do you see it? This is religion, my friend. This is a prophet of God talking or somebody taking too much hashish. Hmm? So now Allah, he liked me because I sneezed. It was a very strong sneeze, by the way. Hmm? So Allah, he liked me now. Do you think Allah now he like he sending me like a, a a gift or something because I was sneezing? Is that his entertainment? Like you know we watch uh, action movie, Allah he watch a sneeze movie. It says here Allah he loved those who sneeze, and uh, uh, and he hate those who uh, he dislike Yani. When a man he say ah 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 what ah 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 what does that mean? Well, he's yawning. When he's yawning, indeed, shaitan, he laughed from inside his opening. This is a prophet of God. When the last time you did yawning, Mr. Mohsen? So instead of looking for 25 Jesus, 25 Adam, look at the 25 stupidity here. This is God. God, Allah, he told Muhammad that he liked the one who sneezed. So Muhammad is sitting in his house and then Allah, he called him. Taradan, 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 and Muhammad, he answered. Hello? Uh, <clears throat> is that Muhammad? I told you. I told you, don't call me. Uh, hold on, Muhammad. I told you, this is the Christian prince. And I told you, Christian prince, once at the time, don't call me inside my house. I have wife here. I'm very jealous. Hold on, I'm not Christian Prince. Are you Thor? Yes, I'm not Christian Prince. I am Allah. Oh Allah, forgive me, please. Please for forgive me, Allah. Forgive me, please. Forgive me, forgive me, please, Allah. Listen, I want to tell you a secret which is personal. I'm listening. I love those who sneeze. Oh, okay. And I hate those who yawn. Oh, okay. I promise you Allah, I will never do yawning. <laughs> Sorry, I just did it. I just told you 
I don't like the one who yawn. And you are yawning? Forgive me, Allah, please forgive me. I don't mean it. I mean it. I'm going to sneeze immediately. Hat you, hat you, hat you, hat you. This is God. This is a conversation between God and his prophet. Allah is revealing his top secret that he likes sneezing, he hates yawning. And you are focusing in uh, Isa and Adam uh, mentioned it 25 times in the Quran. This is what make Allah as uh, Allah for you. Actually, this uh, this uh, this vo uh, this uh, voice call between Allah and Muhammad needs some uh, sound effect. <laughs> I mean, even the Muslim will, will, will not, not accept. accept Muhammad. I'm going to reveal a secret for you, 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 you. I love a sneezing. And I love those who sneeze. I hate yawning. And those who do yawn. Aren't you afraid that when you yawn, Shaitan will jump in your opening garage? And he will laugh from inside your opening. The message is over. It's amazing. That's amazing. And by the way, how this message is delivered to Muhammad? This this message delivered to Muhammad how? According to Muhammad, he used to receive inspiration of Allah as a sound of a bell. Sound of a bell? Yes, brother. <clears throat> Do you see it? And this is Sahih al-Bukhari, so you cannot say it's weak. I wish Muhammad can tell us how he translated the sound of the bell to be Arabic. We have to admit that Islam is a very, very advanced. Long before the Western, they discover this. Translation Bismillah al-Lahman al-Lahim Audu billahi min al-Saytan al-Lazim I am receiving a sound of a bell and it will sound like this Tadadam 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 dot tadadam dot comma tadadam Quotation Allah said in his message to me Tadadam 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 Translation I say to you, Muhammad, any woman she wanna give herself for you, she is more than welcome. And now is this is the only privilege for you. Translation What the heck with this guy? He received inspiration as a sound of a bell? But isn't he himself, he said just a few minutes ago, that the sound of the bell is the instrument of shaitan? And angels will not enter a house, have a dog or a bell? Will not even accompany somebody who's traveling with it? What's wrong with this guy? The bell is the instrument of shaitan. Read it. The bell is the musical instrument of shaitan. So how the bell is the musical instrument of shaitan, yet Muhammad receiving a sound of a bell as revelation?
Hold on. I'm receiving something. I get reserv reserv reservation. Reserv reservation. Uh huh. Okay. Okay, guys. I just received a revelation from Allah, and He's saying to you that the Gaza price is increased. Okay. Okay, this is the musical instrument of Shaitan, brother. We have to recognize and the difference between them. This one is the revelation. This one is the musical instrument of Shaitan. <laughs> but remember, brother, the name of Isa mentioned 25 times in the Quran, brother. That's what is matter, brother. The rest of the stupidity is not important. Hmm. When I'm truly convinced that Muhammad is a prophet. Anything in Muhsan wanna wanna give us, my friend? Muhsan, are you there? If there's anything you want to share with us to convince us we are Christians here, you know, you can convert as many as you want to Islam. I mean, who is like Muhammad? Muhammad, you see, we should not say even Muhammad uh, without saying Dr. Muhammad. Muhammad is doctor, you know, he knew biology, he knew geology, he knew everything. As an example, Muhammad, he found that the river of Euphrates and Nile River, they are from heaven. Yeah. But the most important hadith I learned from the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, he said that if a man have orgasm first, the baby will be like the man. If the women have orgasm first, the baby will look like the women. So depend, my friend, I want you to listen carefully to this advice from the Prophet. He's a doctor. He's a very famous doctor. And he received this information from Allah. If you are ugly and not good looking, regardless if you are a male or a female, don't have orgasm first. Let your uh, spouse come first, please. I mean, come on. For the sake of the baby. Because now we knew how the baby will look like. It depends who is going to have orgasm first. So if you are a rabbit who have orgasm after two seconds, the baby will look like you. He will be a rabbit. Wait. Wait. Let the one, the one who is good looking between you come first. So we can guarantee at least the baby will look good. I mean, do you see the science here? Do we have to mention this hadith for you 25 times, Mr. Mohsen? That's a good question, Carolina. Carolina, she is saying, what if they come together? Me, that's really crazy. You will be half good looking, half good bad looking. You will be 50-50, 25 times, 25 times. <clears throat> Hmm? That's pure science, my friend. That's that's just science. This is not this. Forget about religion now. This is this is science, you know. And actually, the only prophet who knew how long the sperm or the semen will live inside the women is the prophet Muhammad. He discovered the time, the date, the hour. You will stay inside your mother, oh, sorry, you as a sperm, as a semen, you will stay there for 40 days. 40 days? I mean, are you sure? Don't you think 40 days is too much? Why he's in a vacation or what? 40 days as a semen? Really? Me. Look, look, the hadith, look, brother. And look here in the translation, guys, the translation. Collecting the material of his body within 40 days. It, it says collecting material in his body. This is what it says in the hadith. You see how they try to cover the, the stupidity of Muhammad. Look at this. Collecting the, stat, the, the, you, you, uh, the creation of any one of you, 
start with the process of collecting the material for your body within 40 days this is what the hadith is saying oh boy we move a little bit we will find something different the human put in together in the womb of his mother in 40 days <laughs> move a little bit little bit collecting in the womb of his mother for 40 days look like, what the heck <clears throat> you put together in the mother womb for 40 days <laughs> Let us go from the beginning and see how the story changed. The Prophet of Allah, he said, that you are gathered in the form of semen in the womb of your mother for 40 days. Do you see the word semen? What happened to the word semen? How the word semen is gone? <clears throat> semen. And it doesn't say womb, by the way. It says button, which means belly. But in Arabic mean two things, either the belly or the stomach. 40 days as a seaman, why? Your vacation? Is that Alibaba and the 40 thief? <coughs> and then 40 days as a congealed dead blood. The Abdul said, the Arabic does not say that. It's here we go, it's in front of you. No, here we go, let's show the Arabic. The Arabic. Here we go. Actually, you know what? Let me do this. I'm going to open the link in Google browser so we can click at Google translation. You know, you mean, you know what I mean? This way, we will have it through two translations side by side. Google translation and the original translation from the website. Is that fair? Is that fair? Here we go. Look what I'll do. I will I will zoom out. Here we go. I don't know why this here coming so big. The text that means uh, okay. All right. I will zoom out and I will click translate to English. Now so we will have two translations side by side. One done by the Muslims in the right and the left. And one here is going to be by Google. Let us do it. Translate to English. You are my witnesses. Live on air. All right. Google now is translating. The page could not be translated. Why? 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 It says to me here, look, this page could not be translated. Why? Let us try again. Hold on. Option. Let us see option. English to English? No, we want Arabic to English. Crazy. Arabic to English. Here we go. Translate. Here we go. Bingo. 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 Okay. You bring his creation. That, uh, hold, hold on. Ibn Mas'ud, may Allah pleased with him, said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, the truth, uh, a truthful, if any of you bring the creation of his mother, uh, Womb for 40 days as a sperm. You see the word sperm? This is Google translation, brother. Do you see it? Forty days as a sperm? Why not thirty-nine days? As we know, according to science, uh, uh, the, the semen of a man can live maximum of five days. Maximum. Not 40 days. Pure science. That's it. Muhammad is stuck and you will be a congealed blood for 40 days too. And then you will be a lump for 40 days too. The total is 120 20 days. You are gone. You are done. <clears throat> All right. Well, I don't know. We changed the topic to talk about to the Muslims who they are here, but look, look like Mohsen is gone. I don't know what happened to him. <clears throat> Do you
Do you know that in China, 23 million people are trapped because of uh, <coughs> coronavirus? My friend, I know. But what, what I can do about it? I mean, you know, what you can do? You know, through history, human beings, they used to suffer a lot from uh, bacteria and viruses, and millions of people died. So now we are lucky that there is a science is way advanced and they can fight it. So let us hope that this one will be the same as the one before it and they will be able to find it. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, how, how Adam, he knew that the sun will set. Exactly. But you know, Adam is smart. Adam at that time, not like Adam today, my friend. He knew. <clears throat> he told Allah, finish me before the sunset. Yeah. All right. Well, as long as there is no more Muslims, look like the Muslims disappear. I think maybe uh, Mr. Mahsin now is gathering his forces to convince us. He, he noticed that it's not working. The 25 number is not working. So we have to find a way to convince those Christians that Muhammad is a prophet. By the way, any one of you can be prophet. <clears throat> So just say any stupid things and after 1,000 years they happen, they will say you are a prophet. You said that a thousand years ago. <coughs> Let me make a prophecy. I believe time will come and airplanes will not be driven by anyone in the airplane. I'm talking about passengers. Time will come that human being will not go to work. Machines will work. Time will come and the human being, he will not even eat. You know? He will uh, be provided with electronic supplement. Time will come and a human being will be able to have a vision which he never had before. I mean, all those, can, they can happen. That would not make me a prophet. <clears throat> Right? Uh, Mr. Mohsen, he said, you are a crazy man. Why you delete his uh, message, Ekorwain? Uh, Anyone he say that, don't delete his message, please. Uh, Mohsen, the one is a crazy is the one who says that a sperm of a man stay inside the woman for 40 days. The one is a crazy is the one who says if a woman have orgasm first, the baby will be a girl, and if a man have orgasm first, the baby will be a boy. The one is a crazy is the one who promised you women with big boobs in heaven. Or he promised you in heaven that you will have endless penis. I mean, imagine Mohsen, he live in China and now they have Corona. Hmm? And China now are trying to stop Corona from spreading. But Mohsen penis is extending, going behind the galaxy. How China can stop Corona if Mohsen who live in China, his penis is endless. Have you ever heard of a crazy guy like this who promised you in this? What you would do with in this penis? Your wife is next to you. What he would do? You turn? Hmm? Your wife is next to you in the bed. Your penis is endless. Where is it going to go? What if your penis by mistake, he took the, the, the wrong turn and he went in the Amazon River and those uh, fish who eat everything. What did what they call them guys? The fish there in the Amazon River? What they call them? What if you go in the river? I mean, those Amazon fish, they will, they will eat your private part alive, man, my friend. You will be a big, a big, I mean, you will have fun. What kind of a prophet this prophet is? You tell me. Why you are so quiet? You call me crazy. Why am I crazy? What I did, I what I said is, you know, to make me crazy. Did I promise you a, a one mile butt? Hmm? Did I say to you that shaitan, he take care of from your anus when you pray? Have you ever heard of a prophet say that? That when you bend over to pray, shaitan, he will take care of from your anus and he will not stop until he make you fart and he hear it and he smell it. Who is the, who is the crazy? A prophet of God saying that you, he, shaitan, hey, Mohsen, I want you to be honest with me. When the last time you felt somebody playing with your anus taking hair from your anus? 
Because if you say to me you never felt that, that's me. Muhammad is a liar. Let me find the hadith so you will not say online. <clears throat> because you know he will say his line. You know you know them. We show them the story. We show them. Hey, daif. You know daif. This is daif. <clears throat> Let us see who is the crazy. <clears throat> I have the hate in front of me, but I'm just trying to find an official website. Let us see. Man, oh man. Actually, I found many videos. I wish I can play them about scholars explaining how uh, Shaitan, he take hair from your anus when you pray. <clears throat> All right. Uh, the, the funny I'm finding the hadith in Google book in Google book you cannot translate the page <clears throat> let us see this one here we go we found it in different website all right <clears throat> let us uh, zoom out and translate إن الشيطان ليأتي أحدكم وهو في صلاته فيأخذ بشعرة من ذبره فيمدها فيرى أنه أحدث فلا ينصرف حتى يسمع صوتا أو يجد ريحا شيطان he take from he come to you when you are praying and he will take hair from your anus ذبره فيمدها فيرى so he and he will straight the hair out he will pull it out and then he, he wait until you fart and he will not leave until he hear it and he smell it. Let us zoom out so we can click at Google Translation. Translate. <clears throat> All right. Satan will come to you while you are in, in your prayer and he will take a hair from your backbone. It doesn't say backbone. It says your anus. <laughs> Are you there, Mahsin? Mahsin, are you there? This is a prophet of God talking, and then he shaitan, he will extend the hair, he will extend the hair in your anus, and he will not leave until he hear the sound of the fart and he smell it. What do you say? <clears throat> In different hadith it says that shaitan he play with your butt. He play with your anus. And you are saying to me, I am the one who is crazy? And for sure this hadith will be, you know, they will say it's daif. It's embarrassing. Very embarrassing. <clears throat> All right.
it says anus so scroll down well I know it says anus it says yeah it says Debroho Debroho is anus anyway so my friends as you see like it's a shame we are talking about Muhammad when supposedly we are going to talk about Happy Saturday and Sunday. But Muslims came to the ground and that forced us to go in the, into the direction maybe we can help some Muslims to leave the cult of Muhammad. And if you read how the baby is created in the Quran, you will die laughing. Claiming that you are created from a sperm who became a congealed dead blood. <clears throat> all right well the important for us you know i mean uh, islam is so clear to us like like uh, uh, you know i mean it's very easy and i'm very thankful by the way that we have those books because many they can get confused and many they are weak satan is very powerful until now, there are some people, they might believe in Muhammad as a prophet. And even you will see somebody converting to Islam. This is how foolish a human being can be. I mean, if a fool like Muhammad can fool you, how fool are you? Seriously, how fool are you if a fool like Muhammad can fool you? How fool are you to believe that there is heaven full of women and women have no panties and their legs is up waiting for you if you say Shahada? What about Allah? He sent me some of those women right now. Hmm? A lot of women. What I will do with them? Especially all of them, they look the same. I mean, this is the most stupid idea. Guys, imagine, imagine you have a million wife. A mil 10 million. All of them, they look the same. They have the same voice, the same eyes, the same face the same hair, the same height, and even the same name, Hur. You say Hur, everybody say me? I mean, this is the most stupid idea ever. It's boring. It's stupid. Who need all those women who they are one woman? Because simply they are one woman. They are one woman. Who do you look the same? If you have my book, Sex and Allah, you will see that it says all of them, they are all one woman. <clears throat> CP, I am a female. Itamara, who said that you are not female? I'm not sure what you mean. I'm not even talking about you. What, what do you have to do with my topic? Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> who is this woman who converted to Christianity? Ah, Qatila. Well, this woman, she she married to Muhammad. The Muslim, they said he married her, but he did not, uh, like she did not move to his house. Uh, and then she looked like she discovered that Muhammad is a fraud. So she, she left him and she married a, uh, a Christian man. <clears throat> Her name is Qatila bin Tuqais, and uh, I respect her. You know, and she became a Christian. Anyone? Qatila. Qatila actually, the name is strange because Qatila uh, is like saying uh, it's the, one, the one is killed. It is what Qatila means. 
But uh, in you know, in these days, the people they have uh, like uh, strange names, names which we don't use today. <clears throat> Who wanna call me? Reference? Okay, well, let us see if I can find you something in English. Uh, Katila, the life of the prophet. I'm searching just in English now. See if I can find you something to share. Otherwise, everything I have is in Arabic. And now I got nothing in English. Nobody, nobody's talking about her. Let us see if we change the letter. <coughs> Yeah, nothing in English. Well, look like I have only to give you something in Arabic, and then you have to use Google Translation. All right. Many website, I'm trying to find you something easy to use Google Translation. Okay, this website, you can use Google Translation. They are asking, who is the woman who married after the Prophet, you know? Let us see this one. You can open this link. And then you click at Google Translation and Translate. All right. Do you hear the fire department? My place here is not far away from the fire department. <clears throat> no, this is not Khadija. We're not talking about Khadija. We're talking about a woman. Her name is Qatila. She did marry after Muhammad. And she left Islam. She became a Christian. She married to a Christian man. <clears throat> All right. So, let us forget about Muhammad and the crazy stuff. It's also here. Also here where? I thought it was in a plane at first. Well, I don't live far away from the airport too. There is an airport here too. Who was Waraka ibn Nofal? Nofal, not Nofal. Waraka, I believe he is the real father of Muhammad. He is a person who was establishing a cult like Jehovah's Witnesses. He is the founder of Islam. Zainab bin to Muhammad Kayat Messihia or Madat Messihia. I'm not sure about that. And Muhammad, he don't have any daughters, by the way. Those are not his daughters, those are daughters of Khadija.
All right. Uh, it is here. Forget about Muhammad and the stupidity of Muhammad. Enough is enough. Time to be time to jump on the air. La 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 la. la. <laughs> Look at this picture. <laughs> I mean, you know, the camera is amazing. Do you sleep with these lies every day? Look at this, Mohsen. Everything we said we show on the screen and this crazy guy saying lies. Here we go. Look at this guy. Did I say anything without showing the reference in the screen? Are you mentally ill? Are you literally mentally ill? Everything I said, I show it in the screen, and you are saying to me, Do you sleep with those lies? I mean, how stupid are you? Not a single thing I said, it's not in the screen from your website, from your Islamic hadith. Showing, uh, giving the link, showing the reference, showing the numbers, and then you say to me, You sleep with those lies? No, my friend, you sleep with your stupidity. Because you are suffering and you cannot believe it, how stupid your prophet, so you're accusing me of lying. When I'm showing you what is written there. Okay, Mohsen, I have a challenge for you. Which one of the lies I said is a lie? I will post for you and I will call you in Skype right now and I will make you read it. Is that fair, guys? Because if I'm lying, if I'm lying, get me busted. Call me right now. Tell me this hadith you said does not exist. Which one? Choose anyone. You can jump in the air like those guys too. You know, Mohsen, you remind me of a, uh, you remind me of a monkey who converted to Islam, and then he wanted to practice Sharia law. Is it true that Mohsen that monkeys are Muslims and they practice Sharia? Are you there, Mohsen, or I'm lying? Mohsen. Is it true that monkeys are Muslims and they practice Sharia law? <clears throat> Hello? Mohsen? What happened to Mohsen? I mean, what, what's wrong? My friend Mohsen, are you there? Is it true that monkeys are Muslims and they practice Sharia law? Or either you say it's true or you say it's a lie. What happened to this guy? See how it twist? Okay, guys, did he say how it twist you are? Okay, here we go. Let us see the hadith. He said, I am a twist. Let us see who is a twist. Here we go. This is one of the companions of your prophet saying, During the pre-Islamic period of ignorance, I saw a she monkey surrounded by a number of monkeys. They were stoned in it because it had committed illegal sexual intercourse. Do you see it? Shri Allah, stoning to a female who committed adultery, brother. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 3849. <laughs> if you have my book, Sex and Allah, you will see the full uh, version of the story that the husband, he was sleeping over her hand, over the arm of the wife, Miss Shepanzi. And then another monkey, he come from behind the tree and look like he have a big banana. You know what I'm talking about. She left her husband's head slowly and she went behind the tree and she did boom boom. When she came back, brother, the husband, he woke up. This is the husband. 
He is shocked. He sniffed her private part and he smelled semen. <laughs> and he starts screaming. And then all the monkeys, they gather together and the sheik, Zakir Naik, and they decide to stone the monkey to death. And this is the hadith in the front of you. So who is a liar here? And who is the crazy? You know, I really feel feel sorry for the husband. I mean, the husband is the last one to know. Like, look, you wake up in the morning. You know, like you are happy and like, like what the heck? My wife, she was a cheating on me. You know, I feel sorry for this monkey. I mean, look at him. No, no, no respect. What kind of a female monkey she is, this Muslim one? Are you there, Muhsin? Explain to us how those monkeys are practicing Sharia Allah. Hmm? <clears throat> There's millions of embarrassing hadith, most of them they are in Arabic. Hey, come on, man, husband, it's okay, take it easy, man. I mean, look at you. Look at you. I mean, I don't blame her for cheating. Hey, close your mouth. You know, I mean, do you blame uh, the, the wife for, for finding a brand new uh, uh, boyfriend? You know, she found a new, uh, you know, a cute uh, husband, uh, boyfriend. Very cute. You know, and he is uh, very qualified to be uh, a perfect, uh, you know, a spouse. This is the new guy. And the funny, they are stoning the female. What is the male? I mean, what kind of a Sharia shari Allah, this Sharia Allah, you are stoning the female. Where is the male? Hmm? <clears throat> Are you there, Mohsen? Mohsen, I want you to be honest. Do this picture remind you of yourself when you call me crazy? Because either me who come with those stories, I mean, I either me or the one who come with the story is the crazy. You tell me who is the crazy. Be honest. Even monkeys are Muslims. What is left? Okay, hold on. You remind me of something. <clears throat> Forget about monkeys now. Do you believe that your prophet, he think lizards are Jews? Lizards are Jews? Yes, brother. And this is Sahih Hadith. They brought him a lizard to eat him. Your prophet refused because he thought this is a Jew. Read it. We were in army with the messenger and we got some lizard. I roasted one lizard and brought it to, uh, to, to the messenger of Allah and placed it before him. He took a stick and he counted his fingers. Look how smart Muhammad, man, this guy is a genius. And then he said, a group from the children of Israel was transformed into an animal of the land. And I do not know which animal it was. He did not eat it, no forbidden. Your prophet, he think, okay, hold on. So if you will not eat it because you are not sure what animal the, the Jews became, so you should not eat animal, you should be you should be vegetarian. Cor correct guys? I mean do you see the stupidity? 
if you are not going to eat this lizard because you are not sure what animal Allah he made them that means you should not eat any animal because it can be any animal stupidity and what make Muhammad believe that Allah he made those animals uh, those Jews lizard isn't it the Quran says pigs and monkeys why now he is saying they are lizard <coughs> Let us show you the from one. Uh, where is the hadith? Here we go. The same. Lizard. The Jews are lizard. I mean, you guys, you're a prophet just because they have five fingers and the Jews that have five fingers, that means they are Jews. You mustn't have five fingers, don't you? You know, you, you're cute. Let us see if the lizard looked like a Jew, by the way. And I'm, I'm not sure. I'm going to do to make like a a study about this uh, intelligence of the Prophet. I mean, how in the world this man Muhammad, this madman, he think that a lizard is a Jew? And you are saying to me, I am the crazy. Let me let me call him, see if he speaks Hebrew. Khabibi Lizard, Khabibi Lizard. Do you hear me, Khabibi? Lizard? I'm Jacques Sharon, Khabibi. Do you hear me? Do you like to buy some jewelry? If you like to buy some jewelry, I have some diamond for you. Khabibi Lizard, you can call me in Tel Aviv. And I will give you my phone number and please, please you call me because I'm going to send money to call you, okay? Because my phone bill has become big, I cannot call you. Khabibi Lazar, are you hear me, Khabibi? Obviously, your prophet is mentally ill. He think a lizard is a Jew. I mean, how in the world he can do this, this point? And look, look like he is listening now. <clears throat> oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> A prophet who he think that the Jew are lizard, he have to be mentally ill. <clears throat> I mean, it doesn't matter how you hate them. I understand, but uh, come on. Just because the lizard have five fingers, he is a Jew. What 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 this uh, man he thinking? What he, what is in his head? What is moving there? brothers and sisters I'm going to introduce for you my friend Benjamin Netanyahu our friend here by the Ramin Netanyahu he is going to introduce your things for you this is Benjamin Netanyahu now this is the Prime Minister of Israel he's a, he's a lizard And actually, we wish we can stop here. Muhammad, he went far with his stupidity to the point he think even rats are Orthodox Jews. Rats are what? Orthodox Jews. Let me show you. Hmm. You think I'm joking? No. Oh boy. Where is the hadith? <coughs> here we go. Look, listen to the wisdom, brother. Listen to the wisdom. Are you there, Mohsen? Mohsen, are you there, my friend? <clears throat> listen carefully. The Prophet said, a group of Israelists were lost. Nobody knows what they did. 
look at the honesty the prophet now look i mean he knew everything suddenly he did not know what they did he knew that the nation of israel is lost he knew they transformed and they are cursed but what he did exactly he don't know so look how honest he is but i do not see them except that they were caused and changed into rats rats Allah made the Jews rats I am going to do a special uh, uh, geology uh, like uh, you know biology geology whatever you call it uh, study and I'm going to check it out mean look at this discovery I mean the prophet was telling the truth brother look at the eyes this is the prime minister of Israel Benjamin Netanyahu you're a prophet Muhsin is not only mentally ill he, ha he is suffering from a diarrhea in his head a rat the rat are Jews and they are Orthodox and they are following the Torah because this is what the Hadith is saying let us talk to him and see if he speak Hebrew Shalom Alaikum Salam Alaikum ah you understand very well he did not answer because this is English we have to speak Hebrew you know <clears throat> I have some diamonds for sale are you interested ah, he's not answering uh, do, you, do you hear me I don't know he's not moving You should know how many Christians killed the Jews in history. Look at this stupid idiot. Look at this stupid idiot. Nobody killed Jews as you did. And by the way, Hitler, when he killed the Jews, he wasn't a Christian. He was killing Christians and you Muslim, you joined his army. Actually, all the army who killing the Jews, it was Muslims from El Bosnia. Go on, go on, read. And this way, you Muslims, you love Hitler. And, you know, let us say... Mohsen, you are telling the truth. What does this have to do with our topic? Aren't you ashamed of your stupid prophet? Why are you changing the topic? I will tell you. You are trying to find an exit. No, my friend, we are the one who protect the Jews. Your prophet, he killed 900 of them in one day. Your prophet is Hitler in his time. And we are the one who protected the Jews. And you Muslims, you fought in the side of Hitler. Go read history. Many volunteer and they join the army of Hitler. And even your faith, your prophet, he said, time will come and the Muslims will kill every Jew. And if a Jew, he tried to hide behind a tree or a stone, the tree and the stone will say, come, there is a Jew behind me, kill him. Let us go back to the topic because Muhsin, he finds it very embarrassing that his prophet is mentally ill. He thinks that Jews are rats. But why Muhammad, he thought the Jews are rats? Look how smart this guy, guys. Look at this. Look how deep he is thinking. He is a person of logic and reasoning he did not just say the Jews are rats no he said they are Orthodox Jews look he said except that they were cursed and changed into rats for this will remind me that Allah he prayed for not to for is the reasoning look at your prophet intelligence for if you put a milk of a she camel in the front of a rat it will not drink it and if you put the milk of a sheep, it would drink it. If, 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 
if, if, if, if. Look at this logic. He discovered the reason why they are Jews. Anyone who rejects the Messiah is a rat? Well, thank you very much. That is your prophet. You're a prophet. He rejects the Messiah. He, first, he called him Isa, which is not the name of the Messiah. Secondly, he rejects that he is divine, and that means he has rejected the Messiah. Number three, he ordered to kill his followers. Number four, the Jews, they accepted the Messiah. All the disciples of Jesus are Jews, you idiot. And the Jews are the one who bring Christianity to us. And you are officially a fool. You have no idea that the Jews are the first Christians. The Jews are the first Christians before us, before me as an Arab. Foolish, like your prophet. And look, you will do anything to avoid the stupidity of your prophet. Are you willing to answer how a man, he have a brain, he will say such a statement, because rats don't drink she camel, that make them Jews? Will you Muslim don't drink whiskey? And donkeys don't drink whiskey. Does that mean you are a donkey? Hey, by the way, Muslims they drink whiskey more than anything. Actually, they only, not only they drink alcohol, they buy perfume and they drink it in Saudi Arabia. This is how much they are addicted to drinking. Anyway, we are done with this Mahsin. We will not let him disturb us anymore. We go back to our topic, forget about the rats. Actually, rats are 100, 1 million times more useful than Muhammad. At least they are, they, are, they are part of the food chain of many animals. What is the benefit of Muhammad? What Muhammad he brought to this earth? Except disaster and security check for 5 hours in the airport. 10 hours in the airport. Delay in your airplane. Paying more for your ticket and tax for security. Have you ever heard of an airplane? Are terrified because of a rat? No, they are terrified because of Muhammad. Have you ever heard of a, of, of a rat exploding himself in a bus? Never. Have you ever heard of a rat kidnapping a child she is six years old and raping her? Never. By the way, the Quran says that all animals are Muslims and they have Quran. Another stupidity of this man, Muhammad. <clears throat> Chapter 6, verse number 36. There is not an animal that lives in this earth, nor being that flies in wings, but it's a part of communities like you. Nothing have we omitted of the book. Look at the stupidity. And then Allah will gather them in the judgment day. Allah is going to judge. Actually, Muhammad, he have a hadith that Allah will judge between two goats are fighting. Allah will judge between two goats are fighting. Meh. <laughs> hmm. They are Muslim goats. Yeah, Muhammad, he killed Umm Qurfa. She was over the 80, 85 years old. Some, they say, even 90. Uh, and he cut her two pieces. He teared her up alive between two camels. He tied her legs to two camels. Look how filthy he is. Yeah. All right, let's change the topic, change the topic. Let's think about something nicer and happier than the stupidity of Muhammad and, uh, and the madness of this idiot. Muhammad the fool. Camel urine guy. 
the brother brother I have a sickness brother can I drink something that is a Christian is made by Christians that is a Christian lie made by Christians get out of here my son I give you enough patient and you are just a scam like your prophet get lost I'm having patient with you for the last two hours and you are dishonest and you are a filthy creature if you have a dignity you will not say it's a lie everything I'm showing you it's in the screen you donkey and by the way look what your prophet said about you if you raise your head before the Imam Allah will make your head as a donkey you tell me did you raise your head before before the Imam I'm sure you did many times and that explain why you have a head of a donkey here we go this is your prophet saying that about you this is the wisdom of your prophet Muhammad S A W S of of M M is short wave F M W A M radio station. Does anyone who raises his head before the Imam not fear that Allah may turn his head into a head of a donkey? Is that the wisdom of Buddha? I mean, Buddha with the belly, he did not come with this hilly. What kind of a prophet this prophet is? He is talking to you as a bunch of kids trying to scare you. Don't raise your head, okay? If you raise your head, Allah will make your head the head of a donkey. Okay? I mean, you must be a certified donkey to believe in this prophet. A head of a donkey. What about a head of a giraffe? <laughs> I mean what's wrong with this guy this guy he have a mental illness he made the Jews rats he made them pigs and monkeys he made them lizard and now he is making the Muslims monkeys the donkeys in different hadith by the way he said the Muslim will become pigs and monkeys too I mean this person he sounds like a Hindu sound like a Hindu this is what the Hindu believe that if you if you do bad you will come back to life in different form and depend how bad it is how bad you will be correct this person have been crazy look what he said about uh, the Muslim they will be uh, uh, pigs and monkeys what the hadith let me try to remember what the hadith was I'm getting old man Look at this hadith here. Uh, the prophet said, here we go. This is about the mice, not about the rat. But anyway, let's see, show the hadith about Muslims will become pigs and monkeys. Um, where is it? Here we go. Um, we want the hadith where he make the Muslims monkeys and pigs too. actually all of those same but they are not mentioning that what what he will make them uh, you see he will make transformation but we want uh, let us see <clears throat> here we go read carefully people among my nation will drink wine calling it by another name yeah they call it uh, black label and a, a musical instrument and they will be and they will be played with them 
and singing girls will sing for them. Allah will cause the earth to swallow them up and will turn them into monkeys and pigs. Do you see it? Do you see it? All of you Muslims watch music. Did Allah make any of you pigs and monkeys? All of you watch TV, all of you, you watch movies, all of you, you, even you watch porn. Actually, number one people in the world who search for porn are Muslims. Go and search Google right now. How come nobody became a monkey? The only monkey I see is uh, Zakir Naik. I don't remember anyone at the time. The rest are Fifi and Mimi. They are not monkey yet. Even most, I mean, this guy is mentally ill. Anyone don't accept him, don't follow him. He, he scared the people by the pigs and monkeys. Here we go, Mahsan, you will be a monkey. Did you hear music? Okay, have fun. You wake up tomorrow in the morning, you find yourself a pig. A cute pig. And my neighbor will take you and make you a barbecue. <clears throat> my neighbor is obsessed with pigs. Wake up in the morning, you find yourself a pig, and then you go in back and you open the door. My neighbor, he grab you, he make you barbecue. Have fun. Hmm? The Jews, pigs and monkeys, the Christian, Allah will erase their faces and their eyebrows. I don't have eyebrows, by the way. I don't have face. My face and my back. According to Muhammad, those who, don't, who make fun of Allah and his prophet, Allah will erase their faces and he will erase their eyebrows and their eyes and he will put their mouth back in their neck. It's in the Quran. This is Quran, this is not Hadith. Christians should not eat pigs. Eh, my friend, Jesus, he said, it's not what go inside your mouth will make you unclean. It's what come from your mouth. And that makes sense. So the naive one, they don't understand the Bible. You see, when God, he says something to us, that's for our benefit. So pork is not healthy, really, as a food. And the Bible forbid pork for a reason. Because pigs, they eat anything. And at that time, pigs, they grow in the field and they eat anything in their way, including dead bodies. So it was for a reason. However, nobody is forcing you to eat pigs. And this is was made for your benefit, for your health, not for God. If you eat pig or you eat shit, excuse my language, it doesn't affect God, it affects you. So you are being stupid. Who care? Do you think God, he care really if you eat pig or not? This is for your benefit. This is why Jesus said Sabbath was made for the man, not the man was made for Sabbath. Stupidity is amazing. Many people don't understand that what is in the Bible about forbidding for you from doing as food is just for your benefit as a health benefit. It's not because of God. God don't care what you eat. God, he created everything for man to enjoy. Everything. Everything is exist in this earth is created for the benefit of the man, including insect. So it's not what you eat will make you dirty. And this is the word of the Bible. It's what come from your mouth, it's not what go out, not go inside your mouth, it's come what come out from the mouth. So don't be foolish. Don't be the same as the Muslims. Abdul Aziz Ahmad, what is my Skype? Why you want to call me Abdul Aziz Ahmad? This is you, Mahsin, right? You came back with a different name? <clears throat> you got enough for today, Mahsin. 
people are very limited you know they are there's many people by the way they are the same the muslim the same as the muslims and the same as the jews we christians should not eat this we should not eat that you think god he care really if you eat this and that that's what will make you good for god the food you eat this what make you good if you drink pepsi you are not a, a good person for him Use your brain. Your tongue will make you dirty, not your food. Your behavior. Jesus said from their fruits you shall know them, not from their food. So should we keep Sabbath or Sunday and Sunday please tell us? You see, there's nothing that's called Sabbath and Saturday, my friend, and Sunday. You see, this is what Jesus said. Sabbath made for we are you know we just read before we start Matthew 12. Go read it. Sabbath was made for the man, not the man was made for Sabbath. So Sabbath made for your rest, for your comfort. The Jews, they are very greedy people. They used to force themselves and force even their servant to work seven days, 24 hours a day. So that rule was made to stop them from abusing themselves and abusing others. Otherwise, any day you designate to God is a Sabbath. This is not about Saturday. Sabbath is not Saturday. Sabbath is any day for God. Which means you take it as a holiday. This is what they call it, holy day. A day where you relax, you worship, you be thankful for the Lord, for His gift. It's for your benefit, it's not for God. If you work on Saturday or not, do you think that will affect God? I mean, a human being is very silly, he's like a kid. This is exactly how the Jews they thought. They said to him, is it lawful for a person to heal somebody in Saturday? Jesus is making the blind see. Jesus is making the, the one who cannot walk, walk. And they are worried about Saturday. So what Jesus said to them? Sabbath is made for the man. Not the man was made for Sabbath. The law itself is made for the man. Not the man was made for the law. And this is why we reject Islam. Because in Islam, you became a slave of the law. You became a slave of ritual. You became a slave of routine and stupidity. While in fact, God do not need your ritual. God, he do not need your holiday. God, you don't even need your prayer. It's you who need it. God need nothing from you. Nothing. It is you who need God. It's you who need Saturday. It's you who need rest. It's you who need food. It's you who need the prayer. It's you who need salvation. It's you who need forgiveness. You need nothing. You see, whatever you do, you are not doing it to God. You are doing it yourself. Yeah, Antonio, I believe you. I believe you. Yeah. And I think you used to be the Pope, right? And you are Mother Teresa. Mm. Let me introduce yourself, myself to you. I used to be Prophet Muhammad and now I'm a Christian. Mm. Yeah. Stupidity. Every day, every day, even Jesus need Father, God, Allah. Hmm, here we go. You, you just left Islam, you stupid idiot. Because you just admitted that Jesus have a Father and his name is God. This is how stupid you are. Get lost. And no, Jesus, he do not need a Father. He have a Father. It's not about need. God is a three person in one. And the Quran confirmed that Jesus himself is a three and one. He is the word, 
He is the man and he is the spirit of God. If you are a man, call me right now so we can laugh at you and I will make you read it. So we as a Christians, we should like think carefully. Don't be limited like the Jews and the Muslims. And don't be really specially like the Muslims. Because Muslims is an empty belief. You know, it's just a it's just a routine rituals, but it's empty from inside. Nothing spiritual. Christianity is about the spirit. It's about you believing. It's about you being truthful. It's not about you praying in the corner. This is why Jesus said, don't be like the hypocrite who pray in the corners. He don't need your prayer. When you want to pray, which means you want to talk to me, go to your closet. Nobody shall see you. Speak to me. Which means be honest, be truthful. Don't do things to show off. So the Jews are the same as the Muslims. They are doing Sabbath to show off. The Muslims, they are doing Hajj to show off. They are kissing a stone because they are pagan and show off. But who need a stone? And what kind of God he need you to kiss a stone so you will be forgiven? And who, who, what kind of God he need you to kiss a stone so the stone will witness for you? We are a Christian, my friend. We are a Christian who believe in a living Lord who is between us. The Messiah, he said, every two. Mention my name. I will be between them. I will be with them. We do not need stones. And rituals is not what will save us. Many people, because they are so naive, they think and concentrate of rituals. Like lighting a candle. That's wonderful. It's good. But what about feeding a poor person? Isn't it better than lighting a candle? What about lighting a candle in a spiritual way? Guide someone to Christ. Many people say, speak about eating this and eating that. What about cleaning your mouth first? Stop saying the F word. Respect your parents. Be nice to your neighbors. Be nice to your people. Be nice to everybody around you. While Muhammad was teaching his followers, if you eat a pig, you became dirty. Yet he was teaching them to rape women and to be their own wives. He was teaching them that you can lie in three cases. Number one, lying to your wife. I mean, how that can be from God? Lying to your wife. The mouth of the devil. This is the mouth of the devil who teach you that lie to your wife is okay. While Jesus says to us that the father of all lies is the devil. Question in is this CP why God keeping us waiting? I don't understand you, my friend. What does this mean? Why Joseph is the only person in the Bible his name mean different to different people? Why Joseph in the Bible that his name means two different people? I'm not, I'm not sure. You know, guys, if you want to make a question, make it clear. Otherwise, don't ask the question. I think some people when they write a question half of the question is still in their head and half of the question became in text and then it's your difficult it's your time to understand what the question is exactly Christianity is way deeper than food and drink Christianity is living God living with God not about food and silly stuff However, when God he gave us advices, that's for our benefit. Which mean, if God said don't eat pork, well that because there is a reason. It's for your benefit. It's not the opposite. Uh, so don't be like a, a, a very shallow person, you know. Christianity is way more than, you know, ritual and uh, 
uh, lighting candles, you know, I'm just praying to God or wave your hand to Jesus. This is not Christianity. Christianity is you giving a fruits to Jesus. The time will come and the Lord will ask you what you did. Where Jesus said, worship me. Mm -hmm. Look at this a silly question. Did you read the Bible? Did you read the Bible? You never did read the Bible because if you ever read the Bible, you will never ask this question. So now if I show you Jesus saying, worship me, do you worship him? You will say no. So why are you asking? I will tell you why. Because you are stupid. Copy paste. All the Bible says that Jesus say worship me. You see, each time Jesus say I am in the English translation, he is saying I am Yahweh. Yahweh is I am. Yahweh is the name of God or let us say the title of God in Christianity, in Judaism. And Jesus say many times, I am Yahweh. I am your God. But the fool you, you don't see it. <laughs> Did Jesus say, I am the light? How he can be the light? I am the life. How the man can be the life? I am the resurrection. I am the truth. I am the truth. Those are names your God he stole from Jesus. If you go to the 99 names of Allah, you will see Allah claiming to be the truth. But Jesus said 600 years, I am the truth. Your Allah, Aka Muhammad, he came after him and he says, I am the truth. Jesus, 600 years before Allah, he said, I am the light. 600 years after, Allah claimed to be the light. And you are saying to me where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. You are very silly. Copy paste people. Copy paste questions. All the Bible is saying, Jesus says, I am God, worship me. Hmm? All over. The Messiah, he asked the Jews, he said to them, what do you say of David? What do you say what? Of David. They said he is a son of, da uh, of the Messiah, sorry. They said he is a son of David. The Messiah, he said to them, well, if he is the son of David, then how David called him God? <laughs> Where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. <laughs> Hmm? Where the Messiah said, I am God, worship me. Let me show you this. This is just to feed your ignorance and to show you and to teach you not to even ever to learn or to learn about Christianity from the Muslims. They lie to you. This is Matthew chapter 22. All right, Matthew chapter 22. Read carefully with me. The Messiah is talking. Yeshua, which means Yeshua, Yeshua al Messiah, Yeshua, answer and say to them, You do err because you do not understand the scripture, neither the mighty work of God for the in the resurrection of the dead they do not take wives neither do men have wives but they are like angels you see he got your prophet busted there's nothing in the day of resurrection there's nothing in heaven about women having sex and men having sex with women that's a lie they will be like angels of god in heaven but concerning the resurrection of the dead have you not read that was spoken to you by God, who said, I am the living God, the God of Abraham. So who said that? God before he said, I am the living God, the God of Abraham. And then the Messiah, he continued speaking. He said to them, but when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the, uh, 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 the, those people who they are around him, the Jews, 
his sons silenced everybody. They could not refute him. They could not answer him. Then he said to them, Yeshua, he said to them, You shall love the Lord Jehovah your God from all your heart. They asked him, What is the greatest law to follow? What is the best? He said, You shall love your love, your Lord Jehovah from your God, from uh, your God, from all your heart, from all your soul, from all your power, from all your mind. This is the great, the great and the first commandment. And the second, which is like, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On those two commandments depend all written law of the prophets. But the Pharisees were assembled. Yeshua asked them and said to them, You are saying, what are you saying about the Messiah? What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? They were saying to him, the son of David. He said to them, and then how David, and then how did David, by spirit, calling him the Lord Jehovah? For he said, the Lord Jehovah said to my Lord, sit at my right hand still, or until, uh, uh, sit at my right hand until I place your enemy under your feet. Therefore, David called him the Lord Jehovah. How is he his son? No one was able to answer him. Do you see Jesus claiming to be Jehovah? Are you there, Muslim? Ah, I forgot you don't even know what Jehovah means. You are an ignorant Muslim. Do you see it? And they say to you, where is Jesus? Is the God is God in the Old Testament? This is from the Old Testament. He's quoting from the Old Testament. This is Old Testament. This is not New Testament. This part here, when he said to them, well, if he is his son, then how he is calling him my God? Right? <clears throat> Right? If there is any significance to it, like Messiah being Joseph in Jewish belief, my friend, the Messiah is okay. The, uh, the Messiah, uh, Mary and Joseph, they are married. Engagement for the Jews is the same as marriage, which means they are married, but they did not live together. So when Mary she delivered a son. The son is a son of Joseph by birth. So what is the difficulty for you? He is a son of Mary and he is a son of Joseph. So by marriage, Joseph is the father. In reality, he is not. This is why the Jews, they did not go after Mary to stone her to death. for Because that will be, if she is not married, she will be committing adultery. But she is married. Engagement for the Jews is a is a is a full marriage, but there is no sexual relationship yet. But legally, she is his wife. Do you understand? I answered you, Abdul. How Jesus can be son of God if he is also son of David? And son of Joseph, you are being stupid now. Get out of here. Son of David, this is not, he, he is not a son of David. He just answered you. He just refuted you. Did you see? I'm, I'm showing even the screen in front of you, you idiot. He is neither the son of David and neither the son of Joseph. He is a son of God. But by birth, he is a son of Joseph. And Joseph and Mary is from the blood of David. So by blood, he is from the line of David. But in reality, he is not. And then he will repeat the question again. Stupid idiot. In China, they say he left as a donkey. He never came back as a horse. How he is son of David and he is son of Joseph and he is son of God. 
And David is a grand, 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 grandfather. So I am his son. The same as I say, I'm a son of Adam. Does that mean Adam, he slept with my mother, you oh, idiot donkey? When I say I am the son of Adam, does that mean Adam, he is the, he is the one who was married to my mom? Stupid, silly. Don't get married. Your wife, she will jump from the window and she will, she, she, she will date the first neighbor she see in her way. And they wonder why some women, they cheated their husband. I mean, look at those husbands. How this guy can be a husband? Who in the world, who is this poor woman? She will marry this man. She will not only leave you, she will date a monkey just to get rid of you. Unbelievable. Even if the monkey is Muhammad himself. When they say in the Bible that Jesus is a son of David, doesn't make him really a son of David. He is born of a family. They are from the lineage of David. Very simple. Otherwise, David is, is, is gone a long time ago. He is dead. He is dust. He is gone. You know, as, as long as we are here, I have an advice for ladies. You see, ladies, let us change the topic. Ladies always, you know, with my respect to all ladies, but they are so emotional. And many of them, they choose their spouse in a very wrong method. How tall he is. What is the color of his eyes? What is the color of his hair? But nobody is interested how stupid he is. How smart he is. How fun to be with a donkey. To live and sleep next to a donkey. To spend many, many, many years to come next to a silly donkey you care for how he look like have fun just wait for what is coming every second of your life will be like a prison you get what you ask for so why we don't change the way we look for a husband and a spouse and the same for men when a man will stop looking at a woman as if she is he's looking shopping for a Barbie, what about we look for a quality of a woman? A woman, she can be a mother for my children. She can be a first teacher in the school, which is my house. A woman who I enjoy listening to her and being with her, not a fool woman who spend her life buying bags of Michael Kors. My friend, life is not based in foolishness. If a fool marry a fool, I think they will be match. They will live better. But the problem is, if you are a fool and you marry a smart, the smart will commit suicide, will go crazy. Look for the quality. And the smart person who is not decent is the devil. Don't marry that person. Decency, loyalty, quality is what you should look for. Not how tall she is. How skinny. I mean, the scale human being look at how he find a partner for life. It's a scary, literally scary.
Many, they go to the bar and they expect to find the woman she is going to be a wife in the bar. I mean, you met her in the bar and you met him in the bar. So what kind of a bar that meeting place is? Quality, my friend, quality is very important. It's way important from a look because the look later you will use to it. You see, if you meet a person, let us say she is very beautiful. She is very beautiful first day, second day, but then you will use to the look. The look will not be too much of a different. After a month or two, you are living together, she became your wife. Now the beauty will start either increase or decrease. So if you like her more, love her more, then the beauty will increase. But if she is a fool or he is a fool, that beauty will disappear. Fast or slow doesn't matter, it's going to disappear. And this is why I advise you uh, when you when you uh, you know when you listen to people let's just say you are going to get married try to go in deep topic so you can examine the quality of the man right uh, CP a friend cannot leave Islam because of her parents how I can explain to her well, if she cannot leave Islam because of her parents, then you cannot, she cannot leave. You see, either you, you accept salvation or accept your parents. That's a choice you make, that's it. Either she accepts to go to heaven or to go to hell. Yeah, stay with your parents. Right? Stay with your parents. There is no beauty. There is no beauty will stay. All of us will get older. We start have wrinkles. Your face will change. Your skin will change. Your hair will change. I mean, it doesn't matter how much maintenance you will do to it. You will not be the same. So sooner or later, that will be gone. What is going to be left of you is your quality. The quality either decrease or increase. right and you know <clears throat> uh, there is one thing a person he should not lose it's his wisdom so you lose your beauty you lose your health you will lose you start losing you know, the, the, the more you age you are you are bleeding simply day by day and those you cannot bring time back that's it but there is one thing should grow for good with you which is your brain your intelligence your wisdom this is why uh, it's very important for us to associate ourselves with intelligent people who can educate us you see if you sit with a bunch of fool what you will learn from a fool he will make you a fool If you sit with the smart people, educated people, they will make you educated. If you associate yourself with a bunch of people who want to smoke pot and do drugs, what you will get next? Right? E. Abdul Aziz, who is your father, Imam Murrah? Uh, uh, you know, I will answer you about this if you tell me who is the father of Muhammad who was born four years after his father. Who is his father? And about Imam Murrah, who is this Imam Murrah? This is what I said to you in the video. Imam Murrah. Do you like to call me so we can laugh? Call me, Abdul Aziz. It's fun time. Imam Murrah, those are from the puppy of Fifi, who don't dare to call me. Why Fifi don't call me and ask me about Murrah so we can laugh? <laughs> He grew his beard like a rat. He looked literally like a rat. And he don't dare to call me. This is how rat he is. And look, he sent those kids. Okay, here we go. Why well, you don't call me so we can laugh? I'm going to log in Skype.
And I want you to play for me the video of Imam Murrah. So we can laugh at you and the one who sent you. The same as we did at you when you called me last time. Call me. <coughs> I mean, this is a group. It's called a friend. Keep calling me. Let me bind this guy. This guy here have obviously mental illness. Call me. Let us see, Mr. Murrah. I will make you the joke of everybody, and this video will be recorded, and everybody will be dying laughing at you. Call me. Abdul Aziz. And I want you to play for me Imam Murrah video so we can laugh. Are you going to call? Or you want to hide like a rat? Where are you? Potato. This is why all of you make videos, but you don't dare to call me. I mean, I'm here. I'm here. Do you dare? You don't dare. You are intimidated. You are scared. You are doing poo, -poo right now in your diaper. Saying to yourself, I'm not going to call him. He will, I will be humiliated. Oh, we have Mohsen is calling. All right. Hello, Mohsen. How are First you? First of all, I to give a big shout out to Christian Prince, who finally, finally has decided to go through some of my accusations. Thank you, Christian Prince. He's playing the video. You are truly, truly a brave <laughs> man. Maybe not as brave as someone who would debate me face to face, but yalla, it's better than nothing. So, Habibi, I appreciate it. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He, he hang up the coward. Why you hang up? Why you hang up? Did he call me Habibi? Did he just call me Habibi? My love? Why you hang up, potato? Habibi? <laughs> you know, he don't dare to debate me face to face. I mean, what is this face to face is? Why you don't call me a coward, son of Muta? Why you don't man up and call me or give me your Skype or call you? Habibi. Habibi and Nur Lain? What a ho ho. People of Lut. Habibi? You calling Christian Prince Habibi? Are you in love? Baby, I love you. <laughs> Coward. <coughs> you know, they claim they can debate me, and they can debate me for sure. They can destroy me, but nobody dare to do it. I am the only one who have his Skype open. Any Muslim can call him. They don't dare to do that. I am the one who says, let me call you. They don't dare to let it happen. Cowards. Go talk to yourself in your video and sit like a rat. People are laughing at you. And actually, I really appreciate those Muslims because they are bringing me a lot of Muslims who never heard of me. You know, when a Muslim, he sees somebody making more than a hundred video for a guy, his name is a Christian prince. I mean, how much painful this Christian prince is to you making hundred video about me. And I make two videos about you. I made you shish kebab. I do not need to make two hundred. Actually, I did not make the video about him. I just made a video to respond and get them busted. I don't care who they are. Habibi, eh? Cowards. <clears throat> Let us see.
Hmm. Habibi. Yeah, anyway, we go back to our topic. You see, they try to disturb us from our topic. They are they are getting hurt. They are getting hurt badly. So my friend advice to you, all of you, male or female, don't be silly like the Mohammedan. The Mohammedan they do shopping when they get married. Because they don't care really for how long the women she will stay. They don't care even how long the man will stay. The women in Islam, she care about how much dowry she will make because this is a business. How much, how much money she will get paid when she get divorced because this will happen sooner or later. They have no security. You know, their marriage is just temporarily. It is just a contract of sexual sharing bed. It's not really a marriage. For you as a Christian, the story is different. Look for the quality. Look how much you share together. Look if she is a believer or not. Look, maybe she don't. Maybe she will make fun of your belief. Maybe she will teach your children something wrong. So you have to be sure that you are in a match in a way where you both enjoy each other as the Lord He taught us to be. It's not about how tall she is or how short she is. How good is going to be to you? What if you one day, you know, you marry a woman, she is just, she care for fashion and makeup and etc. What if one day you became disabled? What do you think this woman she would do with you? How many days she would stay with you after you became disabled? A week? Right? <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> yeah, anyway, guys, just forget about those names. You know, they 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 are like bugs. They try to disturb what we do. So please uh, avoid them. You know, don't I don't I don't want to mention their names anymore. Just forget them. I mean, they want to call us, call us. That's simple, correct? There's no need to talk about them, and you know, let them talk about us. Let us be the quality, and let us let them, let, them, let, them, let they are the casualty. They are terrified. They are scared. So let us not to waste our time. For us, our Skype is open. The one you want to call is welcome. You don't want to call, it's up to you. You are brave, you are a hero, no problem. You know, we are scared of you. Okay. But it is us who open our Skype so Muslims can call. It's not them. So everybody can see who is the one who's scared. So we do not need to spend our time just talking about those kids. They are kids. <clears throat> anyway, so always be careful and don't be fooled by the foolishnesses of these days. You know, uh, a, a woman, she have a beautiful body. Okay, what her beautiful body will do to you when you get sick, or you 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 know you are you became poor. If she don't have a quality, she will leave you. If she is a woman just looking for a husband who will buy her nice clothes or nice jewelries, you know, one day you will get poor. She will leave you for the first man who can afford. So, it's very important to look for a quality different from the quality which the world today see. You know, these days, you go, like, I go everywhere, I find women, they have fake eyelashes. I mean, what this is, what this is about? I mean, they look even stupid with it. The eyelashes is like a, it's like a curtain. I mean, what is that? You lost your confidence in yourself? You think you are not beautiful, so you have to, to add, to, to add a, a plastic to your face? I mean, how much we are losing confidence in ourselves to the point we have to add fake lashes, fake la lips, fake whatever, fake even breast. I mean, everything became fake. How in the world that will make you beautiful? That will make you a fool. That is foolishness. Somebody is fooling you, taking your money to give you little things to put it in your eyes. I feel sorry really for women who spend a lot of money to buy a bag, a purse, 
Three hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, ten thousand. I mean, this is a crazy. And how much your salary is? You make the rich rich because you're a fool. So the guy who make this brand, he gets so rich, he is living happy because you are a fool, and you are miserable. You got just a little plastic bag worth nothing. Just because you want to show off. And that supposedly will make you the quality women or buying expensive perfume I don't know that how a human being think all this perfume they give you it's not even worse the water inside it they are fooling you and why you need the perfume you are you stink I mean what is that that will make you a flower or what I mean, it's really weird. If you look at a human being, how he behave and how much he add accessories to himself. I'm not talking about necessarily accessories. There's things like today you need a phone. It's a it's a map. It's a memory. It's a it's a you know it's a, a, a in touch with the family. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about things there. There's no need for them. Why you need like a hundred shoes? I mean, how many you would wear before you die? Why you keep buying a clothing? What you would do with those clothing? You wear the skirt once, you cannot wear it again? Why? Well, what will happen if you wear it again and again? The society will reject you? I'm not busting ladies, I'm busting, I'm, I'm busting thinking. And by the way, men are the same, but men, and they have different uh, style, you know? Men, they brag about how many women they slept with. They became like rats. You know the rats? They go from a sink to a sink. And then after they get from the sink, they start bragging about what, how, what they did inside the sink. Men, they became full of shame. They are proud. They sit together and say, I slept with this woman, and I slept with that woman, and I slept with that woman. And maybe, in fact, they did not even touch that woman. This is why I'm saying to you, you have to look for a quality. Quality is very important. You focus on the man how, how good looking he is, not how good a quality he is. Same for the women. I will make the beauty industry bankrupt. No, I mean, seriously, I mean, why, why? Okay, listen, if a man will like you, if, if, if a man will like you because you have uh, eyelashes, okay, but sooner or later, those eyelashes will fill, <laughs> fill down. <laughs> what, you will keep hiding yourself under the blanket? I mean, sooner or later, uh, people will look, will know how you look like, and one day you will get older too. I mean, this is stupid. This is not a beauty. This is a dummy. Live free, my friend. Do you know how many women they are slaves of their makeup to the point they cannot move around without makeup? Be free. I mean, what is the business of the world around you if you have lips stuck or not? And why you are worried about how they see you? Let them see you as they wish. Who care? If you calculate how many hours you spend in the front of the mirrors, you will see that you destroy maybe 30% of your lifetime in the front of the mirror. It's a death plan. You are killing your time at time which is a price that you will never have it back. If every day a woman she sit in the front of the mirror for one hour, how many hours she lose from her life a year? 
one hour before you go and one hour to take off the makeup because if you sleep with the makeup that will destroy your skin and not to mention that makeup will make you get older so fast in case you do not know because makeup is chemical is hurting your skin no matter how they say that it is wonderful makeup it's made from natural material there's nothing is called natural material makeup it's a lie the more makeup you put in your face, the more fast you will get older and you will have wrinkles. I promise you. Your skin will not breathe. You are, you are masking up your skin for all day long and your skin is unable to breathe normally. <clears throat> Why you want to do that yourself? If a man he love you, he will love you. You have eyelashes, you don't have eyelashes. Actually, the man who loves you for who you are, as you look like, he will never leave you. A man he like you because you made a plastic surgery, he will leave you for the first one. She have a better plastic surgery. In the Middle East, Muslim women, they use a whitening in their skin for their face. And this whitening has a very harmful material. It is locally made. Uh, they call it in Arabic, zarnikh. I don't know what zarnikh is in English. Anyone knows what I'm talking about from those who speak Arabic? If anyone knows, if you can translate, zarnikh. It's, it's poison, actually. This material will make your skin like a baby, literally like a baby, will make it so soft and so straight, but will make you old, extremely old. After 10 years of using this, you will start adding more because your skin is dying. So when you are 40, you will look like you are 70. All Muslim women there, in their 40, they look like 60 because they use it as their makeup. Very damaging for the skin. It's poison. Well, those who use whitening, they, they are being fooled too. Because, like, first of all, why do you want to use whitening? I mean, what's wrong if you be in an African or a nation? Who said that if you are an African, that would not make you beautiful? Who said if you are Haitian, that you are not beautiful? That's stupid. And you know, a human being is really stupid to the point that white men or white women, they want to get darker. Dark people, they want to get whiter. I mean, do you see how stupidity work? White men and white women, they pay money to go and do suntan. They want to get darker. They spend the day laying down under the sun to get darker. Dark person, he put whitening, he want to get whiter. Why? Because a human being never gets satisfied with himself. He's a stupid. He lost his confidence of himself. How I mean, and who how who care how people see me? I, be satisfied with yourself. At the end of the day, all of this will not help you. All of this is poison. You are killing your body. You are burning your money, killing your health. God knows what this whitening have. Do you know what he have? I mean, this is this cream is is sucked by your skin, and obviously it's affecting the structure of your skin. So if you get cancer sooner or later, have fun. If you are an Asian, God, he made you beautiful. You, are, you have an Asian beauty. If you are white, God make you beautiful. You have the white people beauty. If you are black, God made you beautiful. He gave you the black people beauty. Nothing wrong with you. And then, you know, the media is controlling you, 
making you buying things you do not need or doing things you do not need or like in making you believe that if you have big breasts you are beautiful if you have a small one nobody will marry you why are you a cow why do you need to have big breasts what big breast mean they control your brain and make you a slave of a spending just to steal your money all of this is just to suck your income to suck your life to suck your blood and to destroy you what this is surgery for breast for will cause you cancer go and see how many people die because of those plastic surgery and how many plastic surgery you will do because after a few years you will find they are shrinking do plastic surgery again and again and again <laughs> ah, crazy I don't know what to say you know uh, uh, for me I feel sorry for those people who practice those things be you know be happy with yourself that is happiness anything else is you being stupid and you will never be happy because always you will be disappointed for somebody that not like how you look like I don't care how people look at me I don't even care how I look like honest to God I don't care how I look like why you want to care I mean if people don't want to talk to me because I look like this or that I don't want them just keep away from me that's even better People who like me talk to me. For me, the real person, not the makeup, not the plastic surgery. Let people who like you like you for real, the real you. Then they will never betray you. For they love you for who you are. Not the word they the one they thought you are. <clears throat> all right so you know my my advice that we should just just you know be comfortable with yourself be comfortable with your body and the one who like it like it the one who don't like it who care my friend be happy you are a child of God all of us all of us we are beautiful for him all of us and if your look will make you sad, will that mean you will live a very miserable life? Accept yourself as God created you to be and live with happiness. You know, in the Middle East, Middle Eastern they are very much people of show off I never saw a nation they love to show off as Middle Eastern that's why I don't associate with them I don't like even to sit with them in the table and I'm not saying all of them they are the same but I can say maybe 90% of Middle Eastern they are show off show up nation they, they love to show off hypocrisy show off lying deception and nobody speak about God as much they do and nobody speak about dignity as much they do and nobody speak about honor as much as they do but they have zero of it don't be like them everything is fake extremely fake They spend their day just talking about each other. She said, he said, he did, she did. Live, my friend, live, 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 enjoy life. Live, live and let people live. Take care of your business. Look at the mirror at yourself before you start talking about people. Look who are you, look what you did. Enjoy life because this life will be taken from you soon. 
It's not makeup will make you enjoy life. It's not buying clothing will make you enjoy life. It is you being satisfied with yourself that will make you enjoy life. So when you feel good about yourself, you feel good. That's it. Nobody can take that from you. And why you will not feel good about yourself? Uh, once <clears throat> I talked to, uh, uh, to a person, uh, she was a female, and she said, you know, that she is sad because she is, she is very short. And she said, I wish that my dad, he did not marry my mother. I said, why? She said, well, he is short, and she is short. And now I'm very short, which is true. I mean, the girl, she is really very short. <laughs> and then, you know, during the time I was talking to her, there was a lady, she was walking by, and she have a leg is shorter than the other leg. You know what I mean? Like, some people, they are born with, with, uh, with defect in their feet. So one leg is shorter than the other leg. But she is really tall. And I said, okay, which one you prefer? You with the short who can run or this lady who cannot run? She said, no, I prefer to run. I said, so who is the one now it should be I, so do you think that this lady, she wished to be short like you and she can run? She said, I think so. So I said, see, you are lucky. So you are complaining about being short, but you did not see that you are healthy. You are a fool. There's nothing, nothing, nothing wrong with you. That poor woman, she cannot run. She have like a, she's wearing like a, you know, a, a shoes. I don't know how to describe them to make the two legs in the same height, but she cannot walk properly and she have to walk slow so we complain we complain we don't you know look around you my friend there's people they are born blind you can see you're lucky there's people they are baby born with heart defect Be satisfied. For God, He gave you a lot of things, but you don't see until you lose them. This is the nature of a human being. He don't see things until he lose what he have. A human being, he don't appreciate his teeth until he became without them. Then he will speak like Zachary Naik, brother and sister. God gave you a lot of things. Appreciate and be satisfied. And then happiness will be there. And for sure, you don't need to agree with me. You know, I mean, this is my personal opinion. It's up to you to believe it's true or not. But for me, I believe this is the best way to live. If I show you what I wear, I mean, I have cheap jeans, $10, $15. I have nice shoes, but they are cheap. You know, I choose carefully what I wear. It's a cheap, but good quality. I don't have a single piece of a clothing. It is expensive. And I'm not willing to spend money for anything expensive. If I can get something good quality and it's cheap and I buy things because I like it not because people will like it I don't care what fashion is I never wear fashion clothes I have my own fashion which means something I like I eat with my hands I don't care if people are looking at me or not. You give me a chicken, I will hold it with my hand. I'm not going to use fork. 
You like it, you don't like it, leave me alone. Don't watch me. It's my food. It's my, it's my life, it's my clothing. What's your business? I have one plus phone because it's a good phone. <laughs> Actually, I get this phone because it's very good for video recording. And, you know, I have a problem with recording. You know, when you walk in with video, uh, recording video, it's very shaky. This is the best phone for uh, video recording. Yeah. See, I did not, and it's actually not expensive. It's not expensive phone. It's a very good quality and very, very good price. <clears throat> All my clothes is uh, belong uh, sheep, but I am a director of a big company. Well, you know, you are, I mean, as, as long as you are happy with your clothing, but you know, there's a problem here. You see, if you are a very rich person and you wear, let us say, very humble clothes, some people, they will start gossiping about you, say, start saying he's cheap, and blah, 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 blah. Who care? Let them say whatever they want. Just be happy. Well, the plus is expensive. No, my friend, you can check right now in the... Uh, in Amazon, you can get one for $200. <clears throat> you can get it even for $150. Just, you know, you need to know how to do your sh uh, shopping. You are so Chinese? No. Actually, no, you are wrong about Chinese. You see, Chinese, they are very cheap on themselves until they get rich. And then when they get rich, they buy the most expensive car and the most expensive house and they buy the most expensive accessories. People have a very wrong idea about uh, Chinese. Chinese, they get so cheap on themselves usually until they get really wealthy. Then suddenly the money appear everywhere. <clears throat> All right. Uh, you drink in a metal cup yes I have a metal container which is because this one it kept the, the water uh, you know it's not like plastic uh, things it doesn't give it a bad taste and it keep it for long in good conditions <clears throat> and you know if you if you try yourself to speak to many hours you can imagine how fast you would lose your voice so I'm lucky that my voice can stay. Actually, I used to stay for eight hours, 10 hours, you know, but not talking about this topic, talking only about Islam. <clears throat> yeah, he's saying, the same as the Lord, he said, man is not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for the man, same as the money. You are not, you should not be made for the money. The money should be made for you. So when a human being became a slave of material, that's mean he lost his humanity. That's mean he is not in control. He himself became a slave of papers. But if a person, he controlled the paper, he don't live for them. He used them for his benefit. He don't live for them then he is going to be happy. <clears throat> right? So, yeah, all of us, we need money. I mean, if somebody said, I do not need money, he's lying. Unless you are, maybe you are a farmer, you have your chicken, you have everything, you made your clothes by your hand. Otherwise, you need money, right? And actually, even if you live in a farm, I mean, still you have to buy stuff. So, money is very important for surviving, for surviving, but not you working like a donkey for money. You know, life is very funny. You will see somebody spending his life working like a donkey uh, in the weekend, two jobs, etc., and then he get rich. And then he became now 65, 70, and now he want to enjoy the money he made, but you are dead. 
You go vacation, you carry a big bag with medicine. So now you want to enjoy your life? Don't you think it was the wrong timing? So you have to make a balance. You know, when you are young, travel, go, see, do things. Because the money you save for tomorrow, it's good to save money. Don't be fooled. Don't spend everything. But you have to have a balance. Don't be cheapo. For me, I love to travel. I've been all over. So one day when I get so old, I cannot go. I say, well, you know what? I was in Korea. I was in China. I was in Philippines. I was here. I was in Hong Kong. I was, I mean, okay. You know, I've been, I've been all over Europe. I've been all over many places. So I don't feel I'm really, I, 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 there's something I wish I did do. So if you have really extra money, save it for something good will make you happy and will give you experience because a travel is really good for experience actually traveling will, will change you will make you more independent will make you used to let us say uh, adopt different or new situation actually if you move from a room to a room in your house you will find there is things changing just because you move from a room to a room you might not even be able to sleep first night in the new room, even if it's your house. So what about if you go to a different country? You know, and experience a certain kind of a pressure and responsibility. Uh, <clears throat> I'm half Korean. Yeah, actually, I was in Korea. Yeah, anyway. I did not go to North Korea yet. I hope soon that this guy will go and North Korea will come to Christ. I, I'm expecting North Korea as soon as this regime collapse will come to Christ so fast. Just wait. And I will be happy to go there. Uh, but anyway, I mean, we are not saying be cheapo. I'm saying actually the opposite. Spending yourself but in a good way, not in a foolish way. Don't spend your money in a stupid bag, stupid purse, $500, where you can get the same bag for $10. And then the $408 uh, or $90 you saved from the $500, go vacation somewhere with it. Have fun. Go to a beautiful beach. <clears throat> go visit a, a friend. I mean, life is can be good if you manage it in a good way don't let the rich filthy rich those who have a brand suck your blood they are sucking your blood literally by saying signature brand I mean who care about signature what this is what this signature brand would do to me ah let me tell you what is going to do good to, good to you you will get you will get wrapped because thieves, when they see somebody wearing something so expensive, they expect expensive stuff inside that expensive bag. Do we agree? So if your bag gets a snatch and somebody drag you in the floor because he's a thief, he's trying to steal your purse, don't complain. You just invited him. You did invite him. You told him, I am here. Come to me. I'm, I'm rich. I have money. Look here. Hmm? Look at my purse. $2,000 purse. The guy will think if the purse is $2,000, what is inside the purse? Right? Or spending money and buying expensive watches. I bought I bought a watch from Walmart, honest to God, for $10. It, it was good with me. I don't wear watches, by the way. But, you know, uh, like uh, when I go to swim or etc. Uh, so, you know, we like to know what time I have to go because uh, uh, sometimes like, the, you know, I don't have a car or something. So I need like uh, when when the last bus will be or the last car, you know, like when I'm in the Philippines or etc. So I take a watch with me so I can I don't take a phone, you know, so $10. And the watch was working for almost I don't know how many years. Actually, uh, 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 last time I checked it out, it was working, but uh, but the worst broken, so I throw it away. But until that moment, the $10 watch, it is 
water resistance i swim with it never have never wrong anything wrong with it it's working fine for many years and ten dollars okay <clears throat> Uh, what I asked earlier was how to do thing you think Muhammad inspired the people around him considering his flaws no he did not inspire by the way Muhammad you see in Muhammad time there is people they are called as Sa'alik Sa'alik in USA we call them outlaw you remember the cowboy when a bunch of criminals they go and they you know steal from the bank those are the people who join Muhammad so he did not really convince people to join him as much he con convinced criminals gang to join him actually even in the hadith if you search for it you will see that the Muslim they translate them as the poor people but the fact Sa'alik is not the poor people Let me find you the hadith. <clears throat> here we go. You see in Arabic here, it says, Muhammad, he said, Abshiru ya ma'ashara sa'alik al-muhajirin. Sa'alik. You see sa'alik? This is the word sa'alik. Sa'alik, simply not only outlaw, is the trashy people. So Muhammad, he, con, you know, he convinced the outlaw, the gang, to join him and you know instead of being outlaw people hate you you know you will be hero because you are fighting for god now so by having those gangs who they are very aggressive warriors criminals he was able to conquer the rest and then the rest they have to join his army otherwise i mean otherwise convert or die right <clears throat> Uh, CP, you different people need attention, you not want attention. I'm not sure what you mean. Don't throw away your watch, give it to me. No, I throw it away because fixing the the what they call it the thing and the, the wear it uh, with it is going to cost you more than a watch. <laughs> so if you want to buy these things to hold it, it's going to cost you fifteen dollars. Would I bought the watch for ten dollars? Go buy a new watch. You know what I mean? It's just about being smart and don't let people use you. And you know, spend money for stupid stuff. Like in USA, if you want to fix your shoe, it will cost you maybe fifteen dollars. We'll go and get a new shoe. You see, USA, by the way, is very cheap. It's a very cheap country. If you want to fix TV, it costs you more than buying new TV. You get a new TV. In different country, no. In different countries, labors are very cheap. So fixing the TV is way cheaper than buying a new TV. Here, no. <clears throat> so you have to manage where you live, depending what what you, where you live. You know, depending on the situation, you have to adopt. You have to be smart. Right? Like, I bought a jeans. Listen to this. I bought a jeans and the jeans by mistake you know he gave me the wrong uh, you know it was very very uh, tall like in the the west the west it was fine but it's very tall so I have to what I have to change uh, to cut it from the from the bar so I, I bought this jeans and in USA you can return it within 30 days but I did not wear it you know because I like the the you know, the, the quality and I said it's, it was a good price, so I bought it. I did not even try it. I trusted the person who gave it to me. But then when I tried it, it was very long. It doesn't, you know, doesn't fit me. So I went back and said, okay, I want to cut it off. They told me it cost, I think, $17. I got it for $10.
Well, I, I better than buy a new one. <laughs> 17 dollars to cut the thing to shorten it and the price of the jeans is 10 dollars so you have to be smart okay so what do you do now well, buy new jeans is better and the other one i will use it to work i cut it by scissor i use it when i'm doing like stuff uh, you know in the in the yard or etc you know i got a scissor i cut it down it's just for inside the house <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, it depend depend what uh, you, you have to be. You have to you have to think, and you have to uh, to manage. Uh, I noticed that in Europe, uh, clothing is very expensive. The tax is very high. Like in here in USA, jeans is very cheap. I mean, extremely cheap. Uh, when I was in Germany, I went. I needed uh, my my jeans uh, ripped off. I went from place to place. Ninety dollars, ninety five dollars, one hundred fifteen, one hundred what? So to self, what is this, man? I mean, I was saying to myself, thank God I live in, in USA. Very expensive. In USA, you can get uh, Levi's for very cheap price. You go to Europe, see the prices. I mean, I don't know. We are blessed in USA. Everything is cheap. Everything is cheap compared to different countries. Yeah, but you know, you know, you need to take to atten your attention when you say in Indonesia is less than two dollars. Uh, I mean, but you work for how long to make two dollars? You know what I mean? So price always is relative to your income. So if your salary is uh, five hundred dollars and you spend uh, ten dollars, that is expensive. So it's relative to how much your salary is. Right? Actually, when I was in the Philippines, food in the Philippines is more expensive than USA. And I'm talking about like you, you as a foreigner, there's places you cannot go to to buy food from it, which is very cheap. But there's a places which is safe for you. You can buy food from. It's expensive. It's more expensive than USA. Which is weird. Right? <clears throat> anyway, you have to manage and you have to be smart. And if you are a person who uh, uh, can save money so you can enjoy life better way or you can save it for your future uh, to buy a house, uh, you know, I mean, to, 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 to have a security or to enjoy vacation better than spending your money in the pocket of somebody. He just for a new saying you something, it's called a brand. You know, brand. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, and actually in buying, I'm very lucky. Honestly, like I like always when I want to buy something, the price go down. After I buy it, the price go up. <laughs> and anything, unbelievable. I mean, anything ever I want to buy, the price go down. After I buy it, the price sometimes go really way more than what I bought it. Uh, <clears throat> anyway. Uh, I hope we have a good time together today and I hope we enjoyed our time uh, just be be smart in your life and don't worry about what people think say about you as long as you are not doing something wrong you know I mean if it's about your clothing or about uh, uh, I mean who care about your makeup about don't worry about people because people will never be satisfied with you actually even if you are the most pretty girl in the world people will complain and even they will talk or they will gossip against you more because you are getting attention but you know which means sometime uh, using makeup will bring you even enemies you know women who they are jealous from you women who they are you know like uh, you know like look what she is i mean you know you know what i'm talking about right so don't seek such an attention because that will not help you in any way right 
<clears throat> you have to do shopping with me to get the price actually yes when I do shopping the price really get uh, cheap anything I buy it go down it doesn't matter what it is I go a week, you know, a week after and I check the same thing I bought the price is way up so I don't know I'm really lucky uh, when it's come to to buying stuff <clears throat> uh, I have a I have a TV here it's it's, uh, it's Sony this TV I got if I tell you how I get it it was very funny I was in the cashier and then they announced in the speaker that the first one he claimed Sony TV etc 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 I don't know even what it is you know for a price of etc I could not believe the price I was in the cashier I said me right away and then the cashier put his hand up he said we have somebody here he claimed the TV I get it for very cheap price three years after I bought the TV and the TV is still more than four times than the price I got it for I needed a TV and not only I got a TV I got it which is Sony which is really good very good nice TV I got it for extremely I could not believe it when they announced in the speaker anyone he claimed Sony Bavaria blah 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 this is a 3D TV by the way <laughs> I don't have a 3D <laughs> I could not believe it I was in the cashier machine I said me I could not believe the price it was like a, a prize you know like it's like you know they do surprise from time to time like you are the winner you know I was there in the cashier I said me and then I was really worried about do I have the money for this now should I buy it or not did I make a wrong decision <laughs> Yeah, it was it was a good deal. <coughs> anyway, I believe that the Lord is my provider, and He is the always. He blessed me in many ways, in many things. And look at you know, look at me. I'm blessed by you. You know, not only things happen to me in my life. I have I'm very blessed with many people like you, who really I mean I, I can feel how many people really care for me which is sometimes annoying me because I stay away for a few days I get too many messages in Patreon saying you know where are you we miss you are you okay so the Lord is really blessing me in many ways in many I mean uh, today you know I uh, uh, what I'm where I'm staying here I left the door open and then the door closed I went outside you know there's nobody the door of the, the the house i said to myself what's happening here how the door is closed i remember i left it open so i opened the door again <laughs> because i'm trying to refresh the air of the house <laughs> and then i went inside working on my computer and then i heard the door close again i said what the heck is that i have a ghost down here <laughs> imagine guys i have a neighbor she thought that the door is open by itself so she is worried the house is open she don't see anyone moving so she come to my door she close the door and she go back home by the time i get out to check how the door is closed nobody there <laughs> and then you know i stand outside and then she came out she said by the way your door is uh, keep opening by itself i said no i am the one is open it she said, oh, okay, I close it because I thought nobody there, somebody will get in. And look how beautiful the, the people here, you know. You see how the Lord provide me with people who want to take care of me. They don't know me. I don't know them. You know, I, I'm here. I don't, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I mean, nobody know me here where I'm right now. So imagine a woman from the middle of nowhere. She don't even know me. She is sent by the Lord to take care of me, close my door, to be sure that the house is safe. Isn't it? This is a blessing. But the funny about it, I was saying, what's happening here? Is Jibril is around? <laughs> is there a genie in the house? I close the door. The door is open. <laughs> Twice, I, I you know, sorry, I opened the door. I op I opened the door <laughs> and I opened the windows. I was outside. So I don't, you know, always when I get inside, I like always to refresh the, the air of the house. So I open the windows, I open the door. But anyway, I open the door from one direction and I open the door from the, the, from the backyard. 
So for her, she see only the door is open. She come and she close it. I go and I open it and I say to myself, I think, I thought I opened it. Did I close it? You know what? I think I'm getting old. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, you know, the, the Lord, he sent you people who, you know, uh, in your way. And, uh, you know, I believe there is always a powerful, powerful hand is taking care of, uh, of us, especially if we are his people. Uh, so, um, be confident about yourself. Don't worry about what people say about you. Look what the Muslims they say about me. They make tons of videos I love. You know, if you are not a person who is satisfied, um, people, they can put a lot of pressure on you. Actually, they can even cause you to do bad stuff to yourself. You know, you, you hear about people who they are suffering from bully, they commit suicide, correct? I'm sure you heard of many cases. The world is full of those bully people. They try to bully you, make fun of you, put you down, uh, uh, you know, harassing you. They don't care. They are just the creatures who they love to harm. So you can be a victim of those people unless you have your self-confidence then you are protected they cannot really do anything to you actually they are doing things to themselves so you have to be strong and strength come always from you being confident of yourself otherwise you see <clears throat> Any one of you try to walk in the side of the walkway, at the edge, you know what I mean? The edge of the, like, let's say, the platform where, let's say, a train is coming, maybe. Okay. <clears throat> because you know it's not high, you walk and you walk fast, right? You don't feel down. But imagine if you are walking at the same frame, but in the height of 40 floor, or 5 floor, or 2 floors. You will not be able to step two step and you will fail down because you are terrified. Do you understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> so why we are walking in the same edge? When it is down, we walk normal and we don't fail. Just because we are higher, we fail down simply because you lose your confidence of yourself. The second you lose your confidence, you will fail. This is exactly what happened in the Bible when the Lord, he ordered one of his disciples to walk to him in the water. But he starts sinking. Why? Because he lost his faith, his confidence of his faith. He could not walk in the water. So the more confidence you have, the more you are able to do. And the more successful you will be. This is why it's very important that you maintain that confidence in yourself, and that all comes from belief. You know, if you don't have belief, then you are weak. <clears throat> anyway, uh, I want to say thank you all for being here. I pray that the Lord will bless you for this Sunday, you and your family. And if you pray, if you go to church, if you pray for people, don't forget to pray for all those who need help, for all the poor, for all the sick, for all the needy, not only your family, from everybody in the world. And don't forget if you can help somebody who need help, to do help him, because time will come and you yourself will need help. And those who never provide help for those who need it, they will not receive help themselves when they need it. Life, my friend, is like a balance. You will get back what you give. Time will come and you yourself, you need a hand to help you. If you never give a hand to somebody, nobody will give you a hand. 
Remember, be beautiful so you will be seen in the eyes of the Lord as beautiful as you deserve to be. And you will be seen as you deserve to be. So be beautiful. Be beautiful to others. Be beautiful to your wife. Be beautiful to your husband. Be beautiful to your children. Be beautiful for everybody around you. So you will stay beautiful flower in the eyes of the Lord and he will take care of you. Wish yourself what you wish to others. And wish to others what you wish to yourself. Thank you. And may the Lord bless you. And until we see you again, Christ is Lord. And anything else is absolutely false. I mean to that. Good night and good day. Bye-bye.